Hey, welcome to the Tuesday Show. I'm Ultra David. And I'm James Chen. Elia Kira. <laughs> A lot of stuff happened this past week. I'm still the only one who never gives out my hand. Jay Chenzor, okay? Oh, I'm Jay Chenzor. There you Chenzor. go. Um, Damn it. The CPT schedule was announced. Mortal Kombat characters were revealed. There was a combat cast earlier today. Genesis, there was a really yeah. big tournament that happened yeah. over the past uh -huh. weekend. We're not going to talk about any of that stuff. <laughs> Sorry, guys. None of that stuff. <laughs> it's all my fault. Blame so, me. We asked him to be on the show, um, as we'll get to for good reasons. But just to say, I asked him. I asked you last week. Before like any of that news happened, right? Imagine, yeah, I figured today yeah. would be like, eh, not that much stuff going on. <laughs> Turned out to be wrong, but it's all right. We're gonna talk about that all next week. Instead, yeah. we have Gerald coming back on after six and a half years. It's been quite a while. Has it been that long? Six it has. And a half? Oh. It was we summer had a, of 2012. We've had, a, we've had a whole studio that you missed. Yeah. yeah like we had the okay. whole studio downstairs for like four years, and you never got a chance to sit down there. So and we're in a new space. In fact, last time we did it was just back over there. So you for know, you, guys, it was upstairs the whole time. Exactly. So. I know. I know. You know. I'm like, oh, you guys moved it over here. He's like, no, actually, we moved it downstairs <laughs> and back up. So I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, exactly. But so, you know, I'm feeling a little lonely. I mean, you guys were a lot closer on that black. We sofa. were. Yeah. yeah we were very close. Kind of, you know, I felt like we we're getting to know each other a little bit better than we are now. Dude, but, I watched yeah. the old episode. Hey, look, Man, I weighed we twenty pounds. We can, I was okay, a we, do time. Do we can do this all if we <laughs> want to. We can do the couch so thing again. Last, so, um, so that last time, we had him on to discuss early FGC history, which is what we're going to continue to talk about today. Uh -huh. Last time, again... Six and a half years ago. Oh my god! Uh, in the meantime, like Stop a ton that, of history Stop has saying. happened. Right? Yeah. Uh, we have history. like new history. New now. history. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Six and a half years ago. Six. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy. I'm already deaf in one ear. You know, it's just like another one. Dave is go. gonna make me deaf with the I'm just gonna one. keep yeah. saying it. Yeah. Six and a half years ago, uh, we we talked about very early arcade stuff. Street right. Fighter One through kind so, of mid Street Fighter 2. Let's just establish this for the people who don't know. L.A. Akira, a.k.a. Gerald, right? So, uh, named L.A. Akira because also he, a friend, L.A. Akuma, Jeff right, Schaefer, right. was one of the old school <clears throat> greatest Street Fighter 2 players, but this is all, you know, with friends with Mike Watson, with Tomo O'Hare and all this, and you played with them a yep. bunch of times. Right. So you were always playing with them. So you were part of that whole entire uh, Street Fighter 2 SoCal scene. You were one of the best players at the time, and in fact, I still claim that you're the first actual U.S. player to have traveled to Japan and played against them over there for a Champion Edition tournament a long time ago. As far as I know, that's true. Right. I mean, unless somebody else speaks up, if there's like you know some like you know legendary warrior that nobody knows about, <laughs> perhaps I don't know, but. As far as I know, I mean, I'm like one of the only ones that actually traveled. There's Kuni, but he's Japanese, so it doesn't really count as a white right. person. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last time I checked. Fair enough. He was but already Japanese, so it doesn't Japanese, really count. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. came from Japan to the U.S., so, right. but he had played uh, some of the greats in Japan, and then some of the, obviously, he played Tomo right. here. Now, I, Thomas Osaki is American, right? I think he's uh, like uh, American. Yeah, I think he was born here. But uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And then also, just so you guys also know, if you saw on the title screen there, He's also the guy who runs the Okamoto Kitchen Truck right now. He even brought us some food from there Absolutely. and everything like that. So. What kind of what kind of guest would I be if I didn't bring food for these guys? You know, Dude, um, I mean, totally right? normal and expected. Yeah, I know, like, right? <laughs> Six and a half years you didn't bring us deal. food. Okay, look, I'm just we saying, had a you know. Back then, you so know? by then, so back then you were a shitty get. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> But yeah, I know. So uh, this is if you guys see me tweeting a lot, a lot of Okamoto kitchen truck stuff. It's because Gerald runs it. Gerald is my friend. I've known this guy for God knows how many years now. Ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, so, it was an Alpha One, I think. Yeah, you know, we be, we became UCLA friends game room. when you started visiting yeah, the yeah, UCLA yeah, yeah. game room all the yeah. time. Well, technically, five was... years ago. Oh what? my God! I'm gonna put this guy in a headlock. Um, the, the, actually, the to... last time you came on. I had been in the scene for 10 years. No, no, Curly W. I joined in 2002, and you were here in 2012, and I thought I was not old school in the way that these guys are, but I thought, like, I was a vet. You know, uh -huh. I'd been around 10 years. You know, little little disclaimer. Anyway, now I, it's 17 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, the crazy thing is the O-Niners have been around the for 10 years. The O-Niners, yes. They have now been around as long as I was, and I thought I was a vet. Yeah, so, and then also Curly, Curling W., he, Gerald was actually probably considered one of the greatest, if not the best, Virtua Fighter 2 player in the U.S. for in the a while. US for a while. Because you moved to Japan, you lived there for a while, you played a bunch of Virtua Fighter, and you came back, and then you were just teaching everybody how to play. 
And in fact, I think it was that uh, Tragic the Gathering when like VF3 first came out and you were like already super good at that. And yeah. I accidentally caused you and Tragic to have a fight and stuff like that. But, <laughs> I remember yeah. that. We'll, we'll talk about that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, How's it going? Uh, uh, yeah. Ben, I love you if you're watching, you know, but we're going to have to discuss this because nobody oh, yeah. else is going to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so d you mentioned before we went on that you thought you should just kind of briefly recap what we discussed um, last time. And as I said, we started with kind of pre-SF1 even, like how the arcades sure, were sure. before that. You went through SF1, you saw Street Fighter 2 for the first time. Just kind of give me a very quick recap of, of those conversations. Well, um, again, like we mentioned, I mean, we're huge Capcom fans, huge uh, Street Fighter 1 fans, and we're just blown away. We went to the location test. There used to be a spot in Beach Warner, Beach called Beach Warner Arcade in Westminster. They used to get all the Capcom stuff like super, super early. And uh, one day we showed up and just hoping there might be a new game there. Again, there's no internet back then. So it was just either go, like it was go and find out for yourself. It wasn't like, oh, like this place has this. Let's go check it out. <laughs> there was no like Intel yeah, yeah, yeah. or, uh -huh, you know, only uh -huh. Intel there was is like whatever you're finding out on your own. Dude, the worst was, it was like, hey, I want to go see if this arcade has Street Fighter 2. You drive there, you go in there, there's no Street yeah, Fighter 2. Yeah, of course, of course. The there's, end of it. there's plenty of that. Yeah. Or it's like, you know, back then, it's like... You, you guys go... had telephones, I mean. Yeah, we had telephones. It's not that old. We actually had pagers, too. <laughs> yeah, but, I, well, I but see, at that time, we didn't have pagers, right? We didn't have pagers. No, I'm saying or... you could have called the arcades. So that's, that's Dude, no one point. called arcades. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so... Anyways, weird um, tech. <laughs> went to uh, Beach Warner. We fell in love with the game immediately. A bunch of us were like, um, there was already a crowd like in, in the location test. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, it was, we'd, nobody had even known about like real like special moves other than, you know, Hadouken, Shoryuken, and uh, Tatsumaki because like we obviously played number one. So it, immediately when we were playing other characters, we we're trying to figure out like, you know, like special moves. And then we didn't know, like, charge moves because there are no charge moves in Street Fighter right. 1. I've so, always told that story. Yeah. That we could only throw a Sonic Boom at the beginning of the round of because you were just holding back. It would go round and what, and you charge. Yeah, yeah. Fight, you go Sonic Boom, and you, you can one. never figure out how to do right, it ever yeah, again. Yeah. That was it. So yeah, that. And I think the hardest one, the last special move we ever figured out was Zangief says Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that makes sense. yeah. And I, I, to the point, and I think I told this last time, was I believed it was a computer-only move because it was so broken. Sure. And so my brother insisted. He was like, no, I'm sure we can do it. And so we sat there and we were trying everything. We couldn't figure it out. And he just started mashing and it happened. And we were like, oh, yeah. oh my. But see, the thing <laughs> about it is, this. but see, we were probably months behind everybody else who's figured it out already because there was just no communication sure. about it, right? Yes, like, Because yeah. you're talking about the Beach and Warriors. When you guys were playing over there, you guys were already playing versus against each other, right? We started versus and we played a little, obviously. But then we also saw like, uh, you know, when you like uh, play everybody and exhaust like all the characters, then it starts showing like, you know, Balrog. Ball yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, whoa, who's that guy? Yeah. And then it's like, all right, beat the game, beat the game, beat the game. So <laughs> we, you know, Balrog, Vega, you know, Sagat. Right. And when we saw Sagat, we're blown away because we've seen him from the first game. Oh, it's that's totally right. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it was really, really cool, man. And the, and the crazy thing is, like, before. Uh, our scene when we started we only played against the computer right. like nobody would play against each other it took a long time before people were brave enough to do that because in that day in the arcade you tried to last as long as you could on a quarter playing yeah. a game and losing in five minutes and there goes your 25 cents was almost unheard of right, you know right. what I mean? unless it was like gauntlet which was designed to suck your quarters of course, you know of course. but losing it to another person felt like a waste so we never even played against other people well i mean yeah. before that i mean i guess you could say there's like a little bit of competition with like games like you know karate champ or you know, uh, also yeah. like Double Dragon at the end, you know. You uh, like but fight. you still got all the way for there. Sure. You for, know, sure, so. for sure, for sure, for yeah. sure. <laughs> but I, I think, I mean, that was like, you know, the game that actually developed the, the fastest method of sucking quarters, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Way better than like the Bullet Hell like co-op games. Yeah, you know? and, and in a way that you didn't get mad at the game for sucking quarters. <laughs> right, yeah. Like everyone was like, Gauntlet's ripping you up. Yeah. Now it's like, that jerk is like <laughs> beating me. That so. makes sense exactly. too, Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there was that. And then uh, I think it took... Um, there was, I found an arcade, I live in the valley, and I, I lived in the valley back then as well, so um, I found one uh, pool hall called Plush Q that also happened to be like this sort of like really, really small test location for, uh, for Capcom games. 
So I went there and they actually had it. So I'm like, oh, I don't have to drive to Westminster anymore. Because we were going for like an entire week. <laughs> we were driving there right, and back yeah, yeah, like yeah, every yeah. single uh, day. Uh, and uh, uh, forget about school. The school just, uh, you know, I just totally forgot I actually went to school at that point when I came a kid. Dang. Yeah, I was insane. I did get expelled just so you know. I got expelled from high school because know. of Street Fighter 2. Are you serious? So 100%. Oh, dude, I didn't know about that. Oh, dang. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. The elite tech that I didn't share with anybody until now. <laughs> Uh, Stay in we're, school, we're kids. <laughs> don't quit. I didn't school. say any. We're gonna we're gonna edit don't, that part. Yeah, right? okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Don't. Were don't. there many Capcom test locations? Do you have any, Do you know about that at all? Uh, I knew like uh, I, like Beach and Warner was the only one I knew about in Los yeah. Angeles, and they had like when Area 88 came out, they got that Strider Ghouls and Ghosts, and you know pretty much everything. I know? guess I guess there's no way to know really for you if that had. That was the case, like in San Francisco and New York. Like, was that spread around, or was LA like the lucky spot that happened to have it? Again, like you know, we like we're totally everything is black because there's no yeah. there's no internet. Uh, who knows? You know? yeah. Who knows yeah. at that point? There's so. BBSing, but nobody used BBSing for like that type of intel. It's sure. just like you know, like really simple chat rooms like Bod Town. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I don't remember that. Okay, I'm just gonna be quiet there. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, eventually, like. Um, Family Fun was like the arcade like closest to me, and I went there. And this before like SF2 even came out. I'm like, guys, you got You got to you know look into this game. It's it's going to be really really big. I mean, you guys are going to make some money if you get it. And they're like, yeah, we'll just see how it does, you know. And then eventually, <laughs> I'm serious. I swear, yeah, this guy told know, me right? that. Was like, that Ralph just, at the time? It wasn't Ralph. It was okay. Tim. It was okay, Tim okay, is the okay, one that okay. told Tim, me. Tim, who I remember because they had the same conversation. I just right. watched it. Uh, he was working there until it closed. He of was course, there the whole yeah. time. Oh, dang. Okay. He was there the whole time. He was like super OG. I mean, yeah. so like okay. Bob, okay. I worked at Family Fun for a while. Oh, know, really? Okay. About like two weeks and I played Street Fighter most of the time so it didn't really, didn't really end too well. Yeah. I was getting yelled at on a daily basis. Yeah, <laughs> so. still a lot of fun. Okay, but, um, so Street Fighter 2 came out. You guys played it a lot. We talked briefly, well, we talked in depth, but to make it brief, um, the scene started to develop. Some top players basically came into the game. You traveled to Japan. Do you want to just kind of briefly recap that? Sure, sure. So, like, the time I traveled to Japan was actually Champion Edition, was, like, the head of, like, Champion Edition, maybe, like, two months after it came out. So right. we had, uh, again, uh, just a quick, like, Cliff Notes version of the last time. Yeah. I was playing at Family Fun. This one player from uh, Pico Rivera, which ended up being, like, you know, the, the best, you know, location for Street Fighter in the United States, and they proved it because... All four of those guys, the number one, one through four there, won the national tournament. Uh, but, you know, they basically, um, you know, paved the way for, like, you know, like the, the high-end, yeah. like, strategy and development. And these guys are just, I mean, they're like freaking scientists when it came to this They game. traveled to all the yeah. different arcades, including the local one, way the hell out in San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. how I found them. That's Tomo and Tony, actually. So it was Tomo O'Hara... Tony Tsui, Roger Chung, and Willie Lee. And Willie Lee Willie were is number four. two, yeah. Oh, so Willie was number two. So those were the four gods at the time. They traveled all through Southern California to recruit people, and we all ended up going of course, to Pico. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I mean, like, the, um, there was a, they had this leaderboard, which is basically one through 20. If you were even top 20 there, you could probably beat just about anybody in the United States. Mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. really insane, like, how good the players are there. Right. You know, so uh, and, NorCal and had a great scene. Thomas Osaki was really strong. The Wolf Brothers were really, really good. Right. Uh, this is far, you know, long before John Choi. Yeah. But, and um, in, the, in the Hyper Fighting Guide for the Super Nintendo, there's always that famous Tomo interview in the back, mm -hmm. right? And it has that leaderboard in the back. You're yeah. on that leaderboard. Yeah, somewhere, yeah. So he, his name is actually on that leaderboard on there, including, like, a bunch of other guys that, you know, like Tetley is on there right, and right, my right. friend Eric and everybody. Roger like, Sahabo. Yeah, Roger yeah, Sahabo yeah. is on there. So like a whole bunch of names are on there. George Nago, of course. What? George, yeah. George, <laughs> so, George was like, the, he was the number five gatekeeper on the board. And like, you know, I just started playing there. George was really, really good. But he was, he was probably like the lamest, one of the top, top like three lame players of all oh, time. Yeah. Back then. yeah. So okay. Justin, I know Justin just did a video about playing lame and I really, really greatly appreciate that. Thank you very sure, much, dude. Justin. Yeah. But George and Jeff Schaefer are probably two of the best lame players in like of all time. And, you know, George, he got to number five just because of Honda in Street Fighter Two. I don't know if you know this. Honda could pretty much beat like all the Shotas with two buttons. Well two uh, Ken and Rue with two buttons. So it's low jab. And then standing fierce if they try to jump. That's all you have to do. Once you get them in the corner, they're like hit detection. That's so funny, man. Yeah. If they try the Hadouken, you know, it gets stuffed. Shoryuken doesn't hit. Uh, Tatsumaki gets stuffed. Yeah. And they can't do anything, you know. It's it wasn't really just the Fireball Trap game versus Honda at no, the time. No, you can't. It just didn't exist. You yeah. can't. I mean, well, I mean, how like Street Fighter 2 was made. They changed it in Champion yeah, Edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Street Fighter 2, the hit detection was so bad 
that as soon as that jab even touches like the first couple frames of the Hadouken, it's gone. You know, dude, the it's Shogos tough. were the worst character in Street Fighter Two. Anyway, right? They didn't knock down. Actually, I think down. Blanco was the worst character. Oh, was he yeah, worse Blanco than them? Okay, character. yeah. So did. the breakdown is like this: Guile, obviously number yeah, one. Uh, uh, Dalsim and Chun Li are tied for number two. Uh, that's because uh, Chun Li has that one trap. Remember what it's, what it's called? The Chun Li trap. Yeah, against Dalsim. Oh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was just strong, strong. Captain strong. America. It was called Captain America. Yeah, Captain America. Yeah. Why? I have no idea. Uh, okay. Honestly, I don't know how some of these names get yeah. invented, yeah, but yeah, yeah. they stick, and yeah. then you got like a hundred people that's saying funny. it, so that's what it's going to be. Okay. Oh, so, so, anyways, Chun Li, Dalsim, pretty much tied for second. I believe it was Honda after that, uh, and then I think uh, might actually be the the Shotos after that. But um, I think uh, Honda, he can beat like Zangief and Blanca for free because like the jab torpedo pushes him so far back that they can never like actually get distance on him. He just has to like jab. And then if they try to jump on his head, he does the torpedo and then he just move like back like full screen. So there you go. Here's, so, the, here's, yeah. the, here's the interview. Here's the famous Tono, Tomo interview. I don't from think this I'm book. on this one. I think it was on the champion edition. Oh, it was on a different yeah, one? Oh, really okay. I think, it's kind of, uh, kind of weird angle. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, it's, it's hard to get it to focus and it's not very clear on this picture. It's not even anywhere. very clear. Yeah. Picture. Oh yeah, okay. You're not you, so you're not on this one. I yeah, was on the right. champion edition, and I, okay. I stopped playing okay. like around like turbo for like a couple months. Right, but this is this is a this is an old hyper fighting guide for the Super Nintendo. This is super old school. I had this. Yeah, this thing was super old school. This was the first time we had information on Super, and we were like, oh my god, look at these new characters. Oh my god, this this character has an uppercut and a spinning pile driver. He's gonna be broken, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, but yeah, that that's the, the on the board in the back. I mean, just just to read off the names that are on here, it's Tomoe Hira, Jeff Schaefer, who we mentioned yeah. earlier, right? One LA of the best Puma. lame players yeah. of all time. Frank okay. Quang was a pretty lame player as well. Frank yeah. was good, but he was solid. He had like some solid skill. Yeah, you know, I trained with him and uh, George a lot. You know, yeah. then uh, next on here is Cooney, and then there's George Nago. I'm sorry, Mike Watson. Then George Nago, then Martin Vega, then Eric Tetley, Vahe, Roger Chung, Roger Sahavo, Saunter, Jason McGlone, aka APOC. Yeah. Uh, who, I never knew his last name until right now. Well, it, it was <laughs> Gonzalez. He, 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 okay. changed, he changed back and forth between two different names. At this point, he was McGlone, but now he's Gonzalez. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, okay, that, all right. And then Adolf, and then James Cha, and that's not me, Ben Kutcher, Norm Ho, James Romney, and Mike Hernandez. Oh, and of course, APOC was from Vegas, and sure enough, he would make it out to every Pico tournament in about an hour. That's wild. Just driving as fast as he did. I don't know about an hour. I mean, it was, that's, like, that's, an hour, it was like an hour and a half. That's like, like a 200 two, mile I mean, per hour drive. Four, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is was, like a four hour drive normally. So It was like two and a half hours. It was something stupid. Through like the that. snow, right, James? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, anyway, that's cool. By the way, we have, a, we have some cool pictures that... Gerald brought to you that we'll show. We will get that on. when the we'll time comes, yeah, exactly. when we move up to like 97 in yeah. Tragic the Gathering. Got some uh, yeah, cool. nice uh, images from there. But after after that, um, I think uh, where we left off at the end of like uh, Street Fighter 2. So Champion Edition. Champion yeah. Edition came out. It was actually bigger than Street Fighter 2 when okay. uh, when um, Champion Edition hit. It was, it was insane. All the arcades were getting ready. They were getting like, you know, maybe like five, six more machines they normally got. I do have some other images, some old images of like family fun, which I forgot to bring with me uh, from around like a uh, champion edition. I'll, I'll just give that to, those to you guys so you could like share it on the stream or whatnot next time. Okay. But um, they had like this whole wall of champion edition. They had like, I think like five or six, you know, in like circles. Maybe I think at the best they had maybe like 14, 15 machines. Dude, and it's right. And it, it's the yeah. first time you can play mirror matches on there. That's right. Yeah. There are no mirror matches in, uh, Oops, in vanilla. So. Yeah. You know, just started in champion. And that's why, uh, I think it was, uh, who had the advantage? I think it was first player had the advantage because they could get to Guile faster. Right, than, right. <laughs> than, Because it started, the cursor started on Ryu and Ken, yeah. and he just had to go right and then right. hit the button. That's so, fun. yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that game came out. It was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, just, I mean, I actually got a machine because I figured that would be the cheaper alternative. You know? <laughs> And it's true. Yeah, you know? that was that was the strategic I mean, way to do it. I mean, that's what Roger Sahavo did, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, his parents got him a machine, and that's where I learned to play. That's right. where I oh, got, wow. gained most of my skill was of going to Roger Sahavo's house and playing there for a whole summer. So, dang, all right. Yeah. But uh, uh, okay, so championship comes out. Uh, you're playing it. Then you went to Japan. This during this time? Yes, during that time. So basically, I was playing in tournaments, and we quickly figured out like pretty much like the strats. I would say like maybe like. Um, a good three, four months, maybe even five months into the game, 
um, we pretty much knew like all the the like top strats for like all the all the matches. You know what can anybody can do? Obviously, we knew like Dictator was the best, and then Guile's the only character that can beat him really. You know, uh, Dalsim actually can beat Dictator as well, but it's it's really situational. He has to get him in the corner. Once he gets him that in the corner, sense. there's right. nothing Dictator can do. It's just uh, it's not Yoga Fire. It's Yoga Flame because Yoga Flame knocks him down and then throw. And then uh, his his uh, Dalsum's throw range is bigger than Dictator's, right. uh-huh. and if like uh, Dictator did manage to get the double knee press out, mm-hmm. the headbutt instead of the instead of the throw. Oh, yeah. it option so selected. Option itself. select, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it puts him back in the corner. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, yeah. okay. That was that was the old school. That was the only way to beat Dictator right, right. with uh-huh. But then, uh, but couldn't he lock? Dalsum down into the corner, pretty much. You could yeah, actually uh-huh. let go. It's like really who starts the yeah, round the uh-huh. best. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I mean, there's that situations you could like let go of the buttons, and then dictator is still forcing you to block. You right. Know? It's it was just like so a, it was broken, like a permanent yeah. block yeah. string. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Basically. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, you know, we played that. Uh, I had an opportunity. Um, I was working. Uh, a friend of mine worked at uh, Game Fan, and uh, he was going back to Japan, and there happened to be a tournament at that time. So he took me and a different friend, and uh, we signed up, or he signed us up. Uh, unfortunately, you know, obviously, like, you know, we're playing Guile and Dalsim, or Guile, Guile and uh, Dictator, because, like, that's the only matchup you really have to learn mm-hmm. in the game. There was uh, a slot for Ken. So I found out about, like, yeah, so, two right. months ago, and all I did was play Ken. It was a so, character locked. Right, right. Yeah. so the way that tournament worked was that you had to play in, since it was a mirror match, since you had the mirror match, you had to play in the Ken tournament, which yeah. all the Kens played, and they found the best Ken. Yeah. And then you had to play in the Zangief tournament. the championship, tournament. right? It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't mirror. You could Good mirror match at this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and why they, that's why they did the tournament this way because they wanted to find the best Zangies to fight against the best Ken. So they forced you guys to to, to play the, the own like there was the Zangief only tournament okay, and stuff. I see. And so the Ken one was the only one that had a spot open, and you yeah. had to go and play. Exactly. In there. I, I played. I got like uh, I got second place. Obviously, you know, in like the Ken brackets. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, second place isn't gonna go to like the finals. Right. Into like the the main tournament. Uh, but like a lot of like the, the play that I did at like, uh, Gamers Chop and Bicky's and then uh, Akihabara, Club Sega Akihabara right. and like, uh, Jack and Betty's, you know, I could tell, I mean, they're really, really strong players, but they didn't know there wasn't any like special tech that we didn't know. You know, I right. mean, I think at that point, like the, uh, the, comp- the, the level of play, like everybody was so like determined to win in the United States and we had so many like players and so much variety we actually had like a good like play environment, you know, like a super high level mm-hmm, play environment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That actually fell off after like Champion and Turbo because like a lot less people started playing. Right, and, and they super killed everything. Exactly. But, yeah. oh. but, well, actually, I, I mean, that's basically where we stopped last time. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I would like to talk about Super and the impact that that game had on the scene, and then going into ST and how things changed if they did. Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, like after Champion Edition. Um, it already started dying. You know, it's like after in, in hyper yeah, fighting? after like hyper fighting, you could see like the numbers. You know, towards the end of hyper fighting, Turbo came back. I was actually in Japan and in a smaller town, like living there, just like uh, with a friend for like a couple months. So uh, when hyper fighting came out, I was actually in Japan, but uh, that was in Kanazawa, like a smaller city, mm-hmm. it wasn't Tokyo. Uh, but I mean, when I'd come back, I mean, there were people playing, but it wasn't like Champion Edition. It's already right. like you know, like lost like yeah, a lot I mean, of like appeal. One of the things that people have to realize too is around that time, that's when also all the clones started coming out. Right? For sure, that's sure. when like Fatal Fury and Fighter History, Fighter Fighter History, History, History. And so yeah. it started diluting the market, and the, the just wasn't as many fighting game players to sustain that kind of you know the, that many games were, were people like. playing those other games those games mortal kombat like mortal were those kombat big? was they well, were yeah. I, mean, I remember mortal kombat it was big was it big in a competitive way it was i mean uh mortal kombat 2 got really big in the competitive way mm-hmm. you know that i think honestly back then was the peak of like you know competition wise like mk2 and it was a lot of fun i mean a lot of street fighter players started playing that because like there was a lull between like after champion edition that we'd already gotten bored of champion edition and that was before like hyper fighting came out you know yeah. so that was within like yeah. a year right it's year and so a half? fast Dude, yeah. it's so crazy because so like i think about it like when i think back on it like for example alpha one to alpha two yeah. that was like almost less than a year that those two came out and for me i'm like that must have been like two years That's we how were it feels. Like, yeah, 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 uh-huh. yeah funny but That's just just so feels. people have a, an idea of what's going on in the history here so there was Champion Edition, and then eventually, uh, you know, part of the, the Street Fighter lore is that Korea started making, producing these, like, Rainbow Edition chips that, like, yeah. messed up the game. That but... is something that actually killed the scene, you know, because yeah. it was fun oh, at first for, like, a, 
What's up? Uh, negative impact. Absolutely, big negative yeah. impact. You know, yeah. I mean, it was it was fun. It was good for like you know like um, just messing around for like right. a little bit. And we played it for a week. Oh, that's funny. Look what we could do. And then, but it's not a serious game. You can't right. take it seriously. Hmm. You know? So basically, you got Kyle could throw eighty sonic booms on the. Right. Well, that's exaggerating. But seven like oh, seven. I remember, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe like seventy nine. A lot. Yeah, a but lot. then like you could throw special like Zangief could larry it and then jump and then larry it and then one. go off screen and still SPD you because yeah, yeah, you were yeah, on yeah. the ground yeah. while he was off the screen. And then you could hit the start button and change characters. I this that. was rainbow. It was really messed up. And so what happened was Japan at this point was already developing Super, right? So Champion Edition, remember, was the slower speed game, right. and Japan was developing Super. They had no intention to speed it up, but Rainbow Edition was speeding up the game already. Right. So they said, we need to combat that. We don't have the resources because we're making Super. Hey, Capcom USA, can you make your own chipped version of the game right. that's like well balanced and stuff? And so. Uh, James Goddard, who was working for Capcom yep. USA at the time, then took the time to go and make this game. He sped it up. That's where they added like the Honda Butt Slam, Blanca Up Ball, you know, and Air Tatsus and all these things like that. So, and I have to say, in my opinion, it's one of the best balanced Street Fighter games of all time. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. No doubt. I still think Hyper Fighting is probably the most balanced. It's the most maybe fair. Maybe yeah. compare, uh, may, maybe honestly the only ones that are more balanced than that are actually like Street Fighter V now. Maybe. Actually. I agree, yeah. I mean, yeah. out of the old school games for sure. Yeah, because yeah, the thing is, games, yeah. a lot of people are like, Street Fighter V games not balanced. Dude, you don't, these guys, nobody knows yeah, what truly it's unbalanced yeah. is. You okay. don't know about putting in 50 cents and it's gone in about like 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, was gonna say, I don't know if it's a fair game. I don't know if like that's the word for fighting. But right, it, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is pretty balanced. It's it balanced, is pretty balanced. So. Yeah. I mean, compared, I mean, it's like... It's, Ken jumps forward at the start of the round. Fierce. Yeah. Uppercut. You're stunned. You're dead. And that's that it. it. That was kill combo. Or even worse, I mean, like in the old school Street Fighter 2, like there is a certain distance Guile had against Dalsam. I don't know if a lot of people, the, the OGs know this. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a certain distance. Uh, Dalsam can, he, he didn't have, like, he couldn't choose what, right. like, uh, 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 what, how, what type of moves he wanted. Close, he either, couldn't do proximity. Yeah. Either, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so there's no proximity move, so it's either close or long. Uh -huh. But there's a certain distance Guile could jump from that you know you'd think that you're going to get the close range but this the long one comes through and then guile just gets through yeah. it by first for a sonic boom and there goes yeah. around yeah we sense. always called that the magic distance yeah. that's yeah, what me that and my brother sense. called it it was there was just that one range you jumped yeah. at him and if you were any further back the far medium kick would hit you if you were any closer the close medium kick would hit you but that one magic distance right there, you just fierce, and it's just like it's exactly. just like you fall right through it. Basically. And the smart Dawson knows at this point, and he sees like God trying to get the distance, he jumps back fierce. You know, totally yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's sure. the counter for that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we're talking about hyper fighting. Hyper fighting right. comes out. So, the thing is, like, I felt like hyper fighting was a big resurgence because that's when I started going to Roger's house and everything like that. But from the Pico standpoint, did it feel like a big resurgence, or was it already just kind of on the way down at that point? You know, I mean, honestly, like the like the meat and potatoes were in Street Fighter Two and Champion Edition. Okay. Okay. You know, you would get like a lot of people, like random good guys that would show up in Champion. And, like, I want to, you know, I want to challenge Tomo. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, uh -huh. I mean, these guys were like good. You, you'd never heard of them before, but they were like solid dude uh -huh. and then you know charles would literally feed him you know feed him tomo the first round you know and, <laughs> and then tomo just eat these guys up dude and it'd be a, it'd be a tough match not you know? that anyone fixed brackets back in the day or anything <laughs> like that but i don't remember specifically ask you know i don't remember going to a golf land tournament getting to winners finals and then having to play like four people in losers bracket and eventually getting fourth <laughs> place i don't remember that yeah, happening at all that ne so. never happened back then by the way yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, oh what, shoot, Flo's in the chat. Shout out. What's to up, Flo. Flo? What's going on? Hey, I saw your video, but against uh, I think it was like uh, the best Dalsim in the world, man. Yeah, that that, 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 good, that right? Brazil yeah. Dalsim cross ups. He was, he was good, but you know, I could if I was in the chat, I could have helped you out there. A little okay. Bit. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> oh man. So so. Yeah, hyper fighting didn't quite feel the same way, huh? It wasn't, you know, I mean, it was, um, you know, obviously the pros were playing and then people like all our all our buddies were still into it. But, you know, I'm looking at like just like the, the casual gamer, you right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That really builds that overall volume. Sure. You know, because the volume, out of the volume, you get some of these like, you know, random players that might not be going to every tournament, but they're really, really strong. You know, they had like excellent, you know, like... Um, uh, reflexes or you know had a good mind for strategy or, and, and they would actually help you like develop your game because 
the style and rhythm would be different than somebody you'd normally play, right, yeah. uh, like Pico Rivera. You know what I mean? And that's a huge thing that Japan has always had after that the initial few years because there's so many. If you've ever been to Japan, you know, there are these randoms that would literally make you want to never play the game ever, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to, like, uh, you know, uh, like, super, like, you go play like, Super Turbo somewhere, and it's, like, some guy you've never heard of. He's not a pro. He's not nothing. Yeah. And then he just, like, wipes the floor with you. I'm like, well, I guess uh, I suck, you know? I mean, honestly, Street Fighter Two at the World Warrior at its strongest point, it was like that in the U.S. as well. Exactly. Because everybody was playing. It's like, That's you couldn't even saying. just go to the video store and have the machine there, and everybody in there was already super high level. It was pretty crazy. What so. I'm saying is, like, uh, exactly, just like just back then, we had such a volume of, like, strong players mm -hmm. and, like, just different styles that it was, uh, it, like, really filled in a lot of the void. You yeah, know, if you yeah. play somebody all the time, you may get good against playing them or playing a few people, but if you're not used to a certain ry rhythm, it's going to take you a lot longer to get right. used to it. You know, yeah. it's, it's a totally different game sometimes. Which is why the Pico Rivera stuff was so important, because exactly. everybody went to one location sure. and played. So. I honestly think that, you know, Japan is starting to feel that, like, a lot more, because, like, SF5, you know, being, like, uh, <laughs> online only, they don't have the arcade scene anymore, right. you know? Yeah. So it's I think it's a big difference in, like, you know, like, affecting their play. I mean, it's coming out in the arcade now. Yeah, yeah. and well, I mean, it's funny, well, too, yeah, no, because, I, like, we're already... It has, has an impact. U.S. is already feeling it, because at one point in time, we were the best in Street Fighter Five, and now it feels like Japan has surpassed us pretty significantly. And now, when it comes out in the arcade, our, our yeah, reign of terror dunk. is over. Basically, dunk. well, shout out it's to so Europe. Strong Europe random, so strong, So is Latin yeah. America. You're all going down. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Not just us. So anyway. So basically, at that point, on. so hyper fighting was at Pico Rivera. It wasn't as big as it was. No, I mean the same people were normally normally playing. Right. Roger Chung used to be like you know at that point like his best in Street Fighter right. Two is like number four. He's like the gatekeeper yeah, number yeah, four. Yeah, Nobody yeah. ever beat uh -huh. him. Uh, but like you know in that game, I think he was like you know he was somewhere on the board. Well, he was the guy actually that really affected my Street Fighter career because too, he yeah. went to UCLA. And that's when my brother was going there. And so my brother and Roger actually played in grand finals of the first UCLA tournament there. Sick. And he almost beat Roger. And then Roger came back and beat him and was even like, what happened? You know? Sick. And my brother was a Dalsam player. He just did drill, throw, drill, throw, Sick. drill, throw. And he eventually lost. But that's my, you know, he's taught UCLA to play. And that's where I went to yeah. go play when I visited my brother. And that's where I basically learned Street Fighter. So. Did you guys not, at that point, this is a couple years into the game, uh -huh. did you not have the don't throw mentality? Or were you guys playing at a level where that was kind it, of... It, it well, passed that, that already okay. a yeah. little. Although not every place had done that yet. You know, honestly, people that knew it was up with the game they were playing like you know hardcore in tournaments they obviously you know okay. knew it was an accepted thing but okay. any like 7-eleven you go to even through like champion and hyper fighting is like hey why are you cheesing man see, you know I mean, there's still a lot of that i you mean just... that happened to me in the early 2000s in the arcades even still Dude, so yeah. it's, it's, it's after i graduated out. from ucla like there, there was like i was been working for a while and me and tetley went to a hyper fighting tournament that they ran at ucla this is like in 2000 or something and i and I like SPD'd somebody, and the guy that I was playing was like, "You better not do that again. That's cheap." <laughs> and I laughed because I thought it was like me being doing the old man joke, you know? Right, what I mean? right, right, right. And right. I did it again, and he like stood up and like like looked over me, and I looked at him, and I was like, "Are you are you serious right now?" Because I was like, "If you try to do anything to me, everybody here is gonna <laughs> it's gonna fuck you up, basically." Posse. You know? I was like, "Dude, yeah." Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, like, I think it's always as long as there are arcades. I mean, people just don't want to lose, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they don't want to lose to stuff they don't understand or yeah. something that seemed like, you know, tick throw on the old games. It's really, really hard to get out of. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was, I, I've been mentioning Eric Tetley a lot. One of my good friends, yeah. you know him as well. Course, he used to play yeah, the Pico right tournament all the time, but he always told me the story at Castle Park, right? At, at the mini golf course, like he was winning and winning a ton of Mortal Kombat 2 games in a row. He had like an 80-game win streak Dang. or someone. And then one of the guys that he had been beating sat down and like opened his coat and showed a gun. He's like, I'm winning this next oh, game. Man. Yeah, I remember and that story. Tetley yeah, was, that one, yeah. Tetley was like, ah, and he lost. He was like, all right, I'll see you guys later. And he just walked away. <laughs> and that was it. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And people really took it personally. But I mean, those aren't the people that are going to be going to the tournament. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, or winning uh, the for, sure, for sure, for sure. I honestly thought, you know, like, there are people, the, most of the people at that level, you don't have to throw to beat. You know what I mean? You could figure oh, out a creative dude, uh, way yeah, to win. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? You're right. So it's just like there are people that were just really hard-headed and they just wanted to throw despite knowing how the other person's going to react. Yeah. And it's just like I kind of think they kind of brought it on themselves sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not saying you you in general, but I mean there, there are people that definitely it. have been doing them. Like yeah. thinking it's like you really don't need to do that to beat this guy. Yeah, you know, why are you doing sense, that? Yeah. Yeah. That happened to flow too, except it was a knife, not a gun. Interesting. Uh, 
Dang. But I mean, like back then, yeah, even if you threw someone by accident, like you were just trying to walk up and punch yeah. him and you threw, you would have to be like, oops, sorry, you get yeah, to throw me back, even that. if it would kill you and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So the like the like tournament level players were beyond that stuff. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, okay, yeah. They cool, didn't cool, care cool, at that cool, point. Cool. Yeah. You know, even when I went to Japan, there were people like got feelings on me, like in a couple places where, like, I mean, I just, you know, like, just sonic boom throw, sonic boom throw, sonic boom, low round house, sonic boom yeah. throw, and then they just get up and like you know just start like I didn't understand Japanese at that point, so I don't know what they were saying, but I could tell they weren't happy. You know? Yeah, dude, I mean, I'm telling you right now, if you guys have, that's why High Score Girl is so good. I haven't like, watched you, you it. Watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. You watch it, and I mean, they even got TZW to do all the guy right, right, footage right, right. and like the, another, <laughs> yeah, and the, and the Zangief player that Eugene has met, he did all the Zangief footage, Ooh, but that's so, yeah, wow. but they talk about it like he was like he's playing the lame style yeah, and yeah, people, like, someone in the like, arcade. Oh, wanted to fight him and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in in Japan, amazing. did they have that same kind of uh, thing that throwing is cheap? Was that I don't think so. I mean, I just like think... It's... Everywhere else I've ever talked with... I, I talked with people in Europe about this when I studied in London and in Paris. They, they had that. Don't throw, it's cheap early on. I've talked with people from Latin America who said that they had it. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. talked with people from all over the US, North America who said that they've had it. it just It's like one of those... Everybody seems to have done it so, kind of thing. Here, here's one thing. There's this arcade, and uh, it was under. It actually went out of business last year, unfortunately. It was one of the coolest, longest-standing arcades in Japan. You know that specialized in fighting games. The mm-hmm. Street Fighter back in the day is called Jack and Betty's. Right into the train tracks in Kanda. Again, unfortunately, they closed about two years ago. But they, I remember back then in uh, Champion Edition, they had three cabinets set up, and they had signs on top, and then. One was like, you know, light play, no throwing, yeah. and this and that. Okay. And then there was one that said, anything goes. You okay, know? okay. I, I, dude, that's you know, awesome. The big boy cab, I got Anything you want to do. Yeah, because, I, I mean, it. one of the yeah. things that I don't think Sick. people understand, like, it's nowadays it sounds like, God, people didn't want to throw what babies, right? But yeah. you have to realize back then, throws were one frame. They had more range than a lot of normal buttons yeah. you know honda and dalsam could like and they had different throw ranges right yeah. dalsam had a longer Dalsum throw ridiculous. range so he yeah. could throw yeah. like 90 percent of the cast at a range where they couldn't throw him yeah right and again they're one frame so if i did low short low short low short and put myself at just the right distance walk up and through and like it yeah. was literally it was jeopardy it was literally jeopardy if you mm-hmm. didn't hit the buzzer first you got tossed there was no throw teching yeah, yeah. and you lost it like, it like 25% a, a of life. your life yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, so. I guarantee anybody that grew up with this generation of games if they go back and try to play Street Fighter 2 against somebody that knows the game they will not touch it anymore. It is just mm-hmm. so completely mm-hmm. broken, especially with the throws. The tick throws yeah. are so hard to get out of. Uh-huh. And then Dalsim's like, you know, Dalsim's throw range is just so ridiculous. So st- I mean, Something like, like, literally, you know, yeah. Sonic Boom, Guile chases, and Dalsim stands there, and Guile's chasing the Sonic Boom, Dalsim can throw. Yeah. Like, and the Sonic Boom is like in between them. He'll throw Guile, and the Sonic Boom just keeps going. I mean, yeah. it's literally like full character apart. So. The only more broken thing than that, I don't know if like, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Street Fighter 2 is actually broken down in a lot of versions. They're doing, like, you know, kind of like, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. like mods. I mean, obviously, there's no, like, patches, right. you know, like, online. But back then, they were patching the game, yes. you know, like, right. multiple versions. In the very, very first version, the beta test version of Street Fighter 2, Zangief's, like, uh, spinning pile driver range was completely ridiculous. And we didn't actually find this out till later because <laughs> we didn't know how to do a spinning pile driver, you know, or like that tech even existed right. back when like, you know, the version one, the very, yep. very first version one showed up. But we'd go back and find those versions and there's this bug, I don't know if you remember, you know, Zangief could like hit, like I think he hits forward and he could do like rapid fire short. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that? Uh, it was like crouch, you do yeah, crouch yeah. and you hit like jab and short at the same yeah, time yeah. and you go short, 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 yeah, short, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a Ryu speed, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, I did short. that, I did that on the 30th anniversary yeah. on that, on the, on the nice. thing I did, but. I mean, that was the one where that was the only true 10 0 matchup ever was against Honda because it was round one fight. You could spin him pretty drive much, yeah. yeah. And then Guile, uh-huh. if you throw a Sonic Boom to start the round, you're pretty much dead. Yeah. You know? He just like takes a half step and just. And you don't spins bounce the screen you. away. You bounce right, right next right, to them yeah. and you jump and cross, cross him up, up. And then Honda loses his headbutt because you changed his charge direction and that was the end basically at that point. So. But yeah. if he does, uh, I think if uh, he does, yeah, if he does a headbutt at the beginning of the round, I mean, that's pretty much what every Honda has to do. Yeah. You, know, you have to figure <laughs> out that timing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and yes, it's so, so broken, man. <laughs> it's so broken. Yeah. But that's what we had and that's what we played. Yeah. It's not yeah. like there's any other game it. to go to, you know. I mean, so. when Bison had the re-dizzy and what became the most powerful character, I mean, he beat Guile, but he was... Guile's still the best character to fight him, technically. Guile, right? Yeah, I mean, I think Guile actually beats him, but that's the only, like, uh, Dictator's still a better character overall because of the matchups. Guile yeah. has a lot harder matchups. But, I mean, we didn't, we didn't, 
we just learned to deal with it. We yeah, just tried to fight much. bison in re dizzing you all yeah. day. We oh, didn't sure. have any choice. Of course, so. that's all you have. Yeah. So moving on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk about ST. Well, comes, well. So I should, I should mention. Super, my, yeah. my bad. Of course. So yeah, yeah. after hyper fighting. As I mentioned, Japan was already developing Super on the right. CPS2 board. They came out and they're like, look at this cool new Ryu animation at the beginning, all this stuff. But they had no, and they never had any intention to speed the game up. And so when the game came <clears throat> out, it was super slow. Yeah, it was the same at, speed as Championship? Champion yes. it was, yeah, I think it was like the same speed, maybe a tiny bit faster than Champion. But it was a lot slower than Hyper, and people were already used to Hyper fighting. Sure. Yeah. And it just, it was a real shock. A lot of people didn't want to go back. Yeah, so. and, and when you actually read that, there was that one oral history of Street Fighter. They were talking about how they didn't want the game. They wanted the game to have everything be reactable. So they didn't like hyper fighting. So they actually brought, they didn't want to change the speed. And so they left it super slow. And then Super came out. And I still remember when it came out, it was just like the biggest wah, wah <laughs> kind of thing. Okay. Like it killed the scene. Like nobody cared. Yeah. Nobody cared anymore. It was like that. It was done. And in fact, I, at that same Castle Park, upstairs was always the old school games, and downstairs was the new games, and Hyper Fighting was downstairs, and Super was upstairs. Because just nobody cared Dang. about it. So, so Just so you know, I mean, like that, those old school, like slower games, they catered to Tomo style really, really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes sense. And there was when Super came out, I think uh, Jeff actually told me this, like, him, uh, Tomo beat like uh, back and forth. Him and Mike just like a hundred games in a row or something uh -huh, like that. I packed uh -huh, in. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, Jeff was an amazing player. I mean, he was like literally. Schaefer, yeah, 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 Jeff Schaefer and Mike Watson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Jeff Schaefer and Mike Watson. Jeff was like, you know, again, like I said, probably like the best lame player of all time. You know, like mm -hmm. him, Justin, and George. I think probably Jeff was like, you know, lamer than Justin, but uh, he like invented like the old old Saget strategy. You know. And like that whole way of like playing, I mean, that was all. That's all Jeff. He was that, a dulcim player Jeff. and hyper fighting right, right, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, shout out to Paho Punch. Uh, so super, super <clears throat> killed the scene for Street Fighter. Were, were people yeah. playing I, other know, fighting games then, or were they just I mean, not going to the arcade they, anymore? They were, but it just at that point, like the pure volume of players was basically. Okay. Yeah, here's done. the thing. I mean, pretty much after like Champion Edition, it just started going like this. I mean, yeah. everybody. The thing is, in Street Fighter Two and Champion, everybody thought that like I'm the best, nobody can beat me, and like that whole mentality is what grew the scene so big. Because it was like a new thing, and everybody was like the champion in their little Seven Eleven or arcade or mm -hmm. whatnot. And then when they finally found out, like, oh, there are people like Tomo or whatnot. It's like, okay, well, I really do suck. You know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not nearly as good as these guys. And there's some people that were like, you know what, I want to get that good. And you would see him every well, yeah. world's finest every single week because they did have that drive and determination. Right. But everybody that was the king of their Seven Eleven. When they got like a like a hardcore ass whipping in front of their friends, they were just done with the game, you know. Yeah, I mean, and, honestly, that that's that's exactly my story, right? Because when me and my brother, we were considered the best at our arcade, along right. with our friend Chan, and, uh, and 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 Squeaky, right? And that was Chan's little brother. He had a really high pitched voice. So that's what <laughs> Sick. It. But like, we all thought we were good, and then when Tomo and Tony showed up at the arcade and just destroyed, yeah, it was me and my brother. Chan wasn't there, but he was still in that mode where he was like, I could have beat him, you know? Is that same? same Thing, yeah. But then eventually they all started going to Pico and found out, you know, it's like, it's not that way. I, I mean, I, I had that experience too, but it wasn't until I went to college in early 2000s. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I'd always beaten my friends and brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. I thought I was legit, right? Yeah, I, so I had the same experience too, but it's funny that you guys had that, like, 10 years earlier. <laughs> <early. laughs> okay, okay, so, <laughs> like, like similar to James' story, I told this one last time. So, Family Fun, I was, like, the guy that, like, I would get a 911 page when there's somebody actually good in the arcade. I'm not, I'm not kidding. So Bob, who actually That's ran the great. arcade, he would like page me. He's like, "Hey, there's this guy here. You gotta like, you know." And like, like clockwork, I'd show up and regulate. I'd just like regulate, and that was it, dude. The guy would never come back. You never see him. And like week after That's week funny. after week after week, and then one time, you know, I got that same nine one one page, and then I showed up and I'm all like cocky. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna kick this guy's sure. ass like normal." Sure. And then I show up and I couldn't do anything, man. I, I swear to God, I couldn't do anything. And this was Roger. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Roger and Roger Trump, like yeah. beat me up so ugly, dude. I will never forget that ass with him. <laughs> it's like when your dad beats you and you like, you know, like did something you weren't supposed to do. Well, it, that doesn't happen like to those, people yeah. anymore, right? Okay. Because that's <laughs> we still remember well, the right, yardsticks right, 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 and the belts right. and stuff like that. But you know, Not me. but uh, anyways, <laughs> I, I was mean, 
being terrified of the yardstick. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, I wasn't I wasn't mad that I lost either. I was actually really blown away because all the tech I saw, I'd never seen any of this mm -hmm. shit before, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I was so happy that there was more to the game than I actually knew about. So he told me about World's Finest, and literally I was down there every single Saturday yeah. for the tournament after that. And then, you know, eventually I did get to the point where I was like, I was beating him or going back and forth and whatnot. Right. And, you uh -huh. know, it just, it's awesome because like, you know, he brought so many players up and so many players that went to, you know, World's Finest, they, they came in as like really good players, a lot of potential, but they got amazing because right. of the environment we mm -hmm. had. And now, did you ever get to a point where you felt like you could go toe to toe with Tomo or was Tomo always just... The thing is, I mean, Tomo was like the, I mean, like the back then, like the infiltration. I right. mean, it was, <laughs> he was ridiculous, dude. I mean, uh -huh. it, you can't really logically describe like the skill level he had mm -hmm. because like those other guys that he was playing against, they were like all like, you know, 18, 19 years old with right. like, you know, fully developed mind for strategy. And this kid is like 13 years old, and he was just like cleaning, dude. Like nothing. I didn't realize he was that much younger. Yeah, he yeah. was he was 13, 13, 14. Oh, okay. And he was beating realize. everybody up, you know. Oh, dang. But you again, can't tell because even in the videos today, he still yeah. looks the same. He's <laughs> like probably 40 years old now, and he like looks like he's like 12. Like, I know, Man, get dude. out of here. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was really amazing. I mean, he was just uh, he was a savant for that game. That's the best mm -hmm. way to describe it. Yeah. And the people that had any doubts when the hyper fighting tournament rolled around, and he had to play pinball. He, you know, he won stuff. that too. One ball, it's like you know, two million pinball, points, yeah. about an hour and a half. You know, sitting there, it's like, kid, you won. Just you're done, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and he's never played this yeah. pinball before no, in his he life. He played it right? one night before at Yellow Brick Road. Nobody played the pinball because it just came out. The yeah. only time we played it was the night before Yellow Brick Road. So he's legendary. I mean, anybody that had doubts or on the fence, were like, okay, man, that guy's pretty legit. You know, even after mm -hmm. like the doubters, you know, they were. It was just crazy. What what was the age range then? If he was on the lower side, like what was the who was the old person at the arcade at Schaefer. the time? How, Schaefer, like, how old would you think he was? Uh, I think he was like nineteen or twenty. Okay, oh, so yeah. there wasn't much older even than no, that. No, we were we were all between like sixteen to like twenty. I think Jeff might have been like uh, yeah nineteen or like twenty. Cooney might have even been yeah, like the Cooney's oldest definitely guy, the oldest right? guy. Yeah, right, yeah. Cooney's, Cooney's like it was like in his like early thirties or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, yeah, no, maybe well, late twenties. Maybe late twenties because. I'm sorry, Cooney, if you're watching, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> he just seemed old to you because you were a teenager. Yeah, right? well, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, look at that out. big guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. What? He's 20 something? Oh, yeah, my God. He's that's so old. old. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. Tip Flo's old man was Jason Wilson. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. How old was Jason at the time? Do you know? Jason's about a little younger than I am, or Is maybe the okay? same age as I am. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I still remember the first time he came to SoCal, he came to UCLA to play. And I didn't know who he was, but everyone was like, oh, we heard this guy's really good or whatever. And I played him in hype, and I think it was hyper fighting. This was way past the time of hyper fighting. Okay, it was okay, like okay. way later. I was okay. already in college at the time okay. and stuff like that. But like, I played him, he was Kyle, I was Zangief, and I could beat him because that was like my favorite matchup. Right. And like, I remember. And then and then he was like, yeah, I, I know you. You're the guy who like went to like... Uh, like Brazil or something and beat everybody in X-Men Street Fighter without like with only one button or something like that and I'm like what the hell are you talking about? What a story. <laughs> like there was actually like some legendary story about me playing X-Men Street Fighter beating everybody in some arcade with like one button that never happened. But that was about you? That wasn't like Yeah, it was about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some BS rumor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason hilarious. Wilson was like, yeah, I heard that you did this and I'm like what the hell are you talking about? Like I've never done anything like that. That's it, very it was funny. actually so I think we need so. a meme. Somebody needs to make a meme for that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm this is what I'm envisioning. It's like Neo at the end of Matrix One. He's just trapping effortlessly. Yeah. Yeah. Something along those lines. Oh man, a reference almost as old as the yeah, I know, about. right? <laughs> Dang. Matrix is a modern film. Come on, oh, man. Dude, that's older than 20 years, I would think, oh, or maybe right. about 20 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah I no, keep forgetting. Anyway, uh, so. Super, so Super Turbo, yeah. I guess. Is and then the next... Super Turbo came out, and it was cool, but again, I think the scene was Yeah, kind the of scene was pretty dead. much dead. I mean, again, when there was like a new thing, and then Street Fighter went from like, you know, niche, because gaming was like in the 80s, in the early 80s, it was it was a niche. Everybody, you know, went. Yeah. Mm -hmm, as far mm -hmm. as I know, I was like a little kid back then. Yeah. But, and you guys, most of you guys weren't alive. But, um, you know, I would go to like arcades, and I'd see like people going there on dates. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, and that was mm -hmm. really cool. You know, I mean, I, I saw like. You know, like teenagers going there on dates or like older people playing like, you know, look like a mom and dad like playing like yeah. Pac-Man uh, and stuff like that. 
but then it just died off yeah. and then Street Fighter started to like really bring people back to like playing like arcade games mm -hmm. and then after Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition it started to like you know die down yeah. people were like alright well you know that was cool I guess I'm not the best and then they kind of like lost interest yeah. and the hardcore players they kept playing I mean obviously like us we really enjoyed the game and loved it for what it was and we we're gamers in general so we'd be playing something if it wasn't Street Fighter yeah. sure. I mean but, honestly so what's different is like nowadays it's a little bit better because when you beat someone down you're like well let me help you or there's a lot of YouTube videos and all that stuff yeah. oh, none of yeah. that stuff existed and when you beat someone you didn't give them advice you no. just didn't you wanted them to you wanted them to leave the arcade and never come back this, this because what that it was. felt good about it's like, you what do I do I'd be able to learn to play dude you know, yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm that's, sure I did the same kind of thing and I mean that was the old <laughs> school college. arcade mentality and you know Not as great. much as we were born and bred in that kind of fire and yeah. brimstone kind of environment honestly like anyone who like is nostalgic and wants to keep that kind of environment i honestly think is wrong and i think of course, to, today and day we shouldn't be doing that I'm and so you. anyone who glorifies it back then yeah it was fun at the time because yeah. we were the people getting the people you like were the bullies, basically. when i was at ucla me and another player dean would oh, we oh, we would yeah. play each it's other yeah. in the in one machine and everybody else would play the other machine yeah, because yeah. no one could beat you us. Had the big boy, guy, right? So sure. we were the yeah. big boy, and every once in a while, some. And this was after Doug and Dabney and George and all these guys had kind of left already. You know what I mean? So they weren't around as yeah. much. But like, there was the big boy cabinet, and back then you didn't help anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah. just like you just. It's not a very. I mean, it could be. Those could be friendly places. Yeah. I wasn't there for you guys' thing, but my arcades could have been friendly places, but they oftentimes were not. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. mm -hmm. well, we basically only share the tech between our friends. I mean, yeah. and it's just yeah, like anybody that's like it, yeah. good enough to get to that level, you don't really have to teach them. They're just going to watch and then mm -hmm. figure out how it works. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, everybody, I mean, there were like smart kids really into the game. And then it's like, oh, this is what this guy's doing. I'm just going to do that too. Right. Oh, okay, it works. And you can't get out yeah. of it. What is they going to do? I, I, I've told the story many, many times, but it was just like, it was that thing where if you weren't good, and this is my experience with George Nago, because he was at UCLA when I first yeah, started going talk there. To you. He wouldn't talk to me. Yeah. I was just that guy that he wanted to beat up and d depress to the point where I never came back. That's George. But I kept playing and I started beating him. And at that point, suddenly he was like, That's "Hey, when, let me yeah. take you to this arcade. Let me go show." Because like it, he he made me go play Martin Vega because he was like, "Yo, this guy can beat Rolento with Zangief at Alpha yeah. 2. He was like, "Watch!" And uh, Martin Vega played me with Rolento, and I beat him and everything. And then all of a sudden, George was like my friend and everything. But that was the thing is like if you found that guy who was willing to keep coming back, keep getting his ass kicked, and learned and got better. You j it was like you hated him, but then you saw, okay, this guy's cool, and now you'll be friends. It wasn't yeah. like this weird turnaround thing. It was just this guy proved himself. Yeah. No, it's the same thing happened for us. Yeah. It was like, that was like 95, I think, when you met George. And then like mm -hmm. probably, I'd already been friends with George since like 91. Right. Yeah, 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 I'd yeah, never uh -huh. heard anything until like 95. He's like, hey, let me introduce my friend James. My yeah, uh -huh. And then uh, he's like, yeah, he's really good at combos, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, doing like all the eight-on combos. Yeah, and, like, yeah, alpha yeah. Funny, man. I was the first yeah. person in Alpha 1 to do low, short, low, forward, and super yeah. at UCLA and Dean was always laughing he's just like how are you doing these combos Sick. you know I was the first one doing all these things so yeah. Back, yeah. Well, back then it was really difficult too because super is the first game with like you know like supers yeah, uh -huh. but it was a lot more difficult to like you know right. like two in one uh -huh. and there's no training mode back yeah, then so course. I was just learning it on the fly yeah. training mode was finding so. arcade of the free play or you know yeah. stealing tokens from early. Camelot or <sighs> some don't stealing. just kidding just kidding we didn't do any of that so <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. no no stringing quarters or anything like that so Dude, yeah. I was actually so. Good all right, player. the uh. scene is smaller, but you guys are still enjoying it. So, so how is it? How was it going for you as people who were still continuing to play? Like, what was the scene like? It, Smaller, I understand, but like, what else was going on? I, I mean, from my standpoint, I'm sorry if I go first real quick. So please, this, please. this is the one thing that I just want to mention is that at that time, that's when KI was out. That's when VF came out, Samurai Showdown 2, and, you know, all these games were out. And by that point, because there were so few players, it was so hard to get anything going because everyone had their favorite game because that was the game they could win at. Mm. And so basically, if you couldn't beat me in Super Turbo, you didn't care. You just went and played MK3 and beat up people over there because that was your game. And so the competition was like, so I had an argument with my brother of which was better, Virtua Fighter 1 or Killer Instinct. And I said yeah. Killer Instinct just because you could play one player because <clears throat> there was something to do in one player because nobody, I've never seen two people play against each other in Virtua Fighter 1 at UCLA. <laughs> Like, no one challenged each other because the, no one knew how to play it yeah. and just no one wow. cared. You know, it was like, yeah. that's how it was. It's just, at that point, it was spread so thin 
that nobody was really playing all that much. Okay. When I played KI in the arcades, I was just playing against the computer 100% Woo. of the time. Woo! Thank you, okay. Gamer. All right. But yeah, for so, you. For me, I mean, I kind of like after a Champion Edition and uh, Hyper Fighting, I started like sideboard into VF. You know, VF yeah. VF one was um, it was cool, but I mean, it wasn't really much of a game. You know, there's there's some things that are just completely awesome. broken. The guy who donated bits says we used to hammer nickels to the side of quarters, size of quarters, <laughs> and uh, use them to play at that case. That yeah, was yeah. definitely a slugs, thing you yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, sure, uh, yeah. It's definitely. What I knew I knew about slugs. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, VF two came out, and I think it was a uh, ninety four. And it just looks so incredibly beautiful. Oh, so and cool. we did get a scene going at UCLA, myself mm -hmm. and uh, Kim, Kim, who you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kim ran the UCLA now, game room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it works with me. I don't want to yeah, say yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. But um, we basically, Kim used to run the UCLA game room. So after mm -hmm. it closed, I get there really late. And then we just, like, he'd just keep it on all night, yeah, you know. Yeah, and then we just play Virtua Fighter Kim, for free. And Kim you know, was one of, like, my first, like, big arcade friends at UCLA because he worked there and he saw me all the time. We all knew we were good at fighting games. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it, was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I had a lot of fun playing VF2. And, you know, if, like, again, if there weren't that many people playing, uh, I mean, there weren't play people playing VF anyways, but, mm -hmm. you know, we at least had, like, a small crew we could get, get together, like five or six right. or seven people, and, uh, you know, just really try to get good. And then VF3 came right. out. Uh, well, even before VF3, one thing I just want to mention is that you guys would always play, and I would come and try to play VF2 right, right. with you guys. I could not play that game worth crap. I could never get good at that game. Like, there's just nothing about that game that made sense to me. The mentality is completely different. I Street lost Fighter, to yeah. take off Kick Jeffrey at the UCLA Arcade, yeah, who would just always do up kick, and he'd hit me 100% of the time. Take off Kick Jeffrey? That yeah. was what you guys nicknamed him. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we, we had funny names for all sorts yeah, of people. Yeah, uh -huh. and he yeah. would just blow me up, but... um. Also, just as a, as a weird little side note here, around this time is when Amir started showing up yep, to the yep. UCLA okay. arcade. He's like this 10-year-old boy. And like I said, he was tiny. He's oh a small God. little guy. Yeah, he's like my age. So. And like yeah. at, one, at one summer, he went from this to like this. And I was like, what happened? He, he was like, hey, James. All, like he went yeah. from, hey, James. Hey, James. Yeah. And hey, then James. he was like, hey, James. I was like, what the <laughs> hell just happened? Later, one of the best uh, third strike players yes. in America. Mm, yeah. exactly. I mean, Amir... A, like, a decade hey, after that. Amir mm -hmm. actually was, uh, he played uh, Virtua Fighter 2 with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, even back then, when he was like, you know, 11, 12 years old, this kid had ridiculous hand dexterity, you know? Yeah. And, and I, like I, some of the stuff that we had to like practice like a lot to like get like spots consistent. And stuff yeah, the spot. I mean, we had to like, I would do like spots and then in VF3, like DLCs, like 100 times a day uh, uh -huh. on each side just so I wouldn't forget. I'd never miss. Right. But he just like automatically yeah. always had it. You know, he was really great at that. Huh. And the biggest, the, the, the nastiest game for him was Killer Instinct, man. Oh, yeah. oh my God, dude. <laughs> well, cause that kid on Killer Instinct was ridiculous. Ridiculous, yeah, man. Nobody mean, wanted to play him. Honestly, like, I feel like I was a big influence on him because we used to play at the arcades all the time, right. and I used to beat him all the time. And he was, I, he was always like, "How do I get better, James?" And oh, I would help him cute. and help him. And then eventually, it got to the point where Alpha Three, where I couldn't touch him anymore, yeah. and I just got salty. Like he would just beat me. I'm like, "What the hell? Like this is a bad matchup." And then we'd switch <laughs> characters, and then he'd still beat me. And I'm like, "What the hell? I don't get that. Like, That's yeah, great. everything about him was very natural. It was so crazy, dude. Yeah, he was well, a very good player. The thing is uh, about Amir back then, we were thankful that, you know, his mind wasn't totally developed for strategy yet, you yeah. know, because we would have all been sorry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he was later one of the best players in the country. Yeah, so. and again, he was also just the nicest kid. Yeah, he's such a good well. kid. Still, still yeah, nice. Yeah, uh, he's, uh, he's, cool. yeah, he, he's, he's, he's a, a super good dude. dude. I used to go over to his house, his, uh, you know, his mom was there, we'd play VF on, like, Saturn and stuff like that. It was, oh, it was nice. a lot of fun. I mean, he was a really, really good dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that, you know, he developed. But back then, George and I would look at each other like, we're lucky this kid's 11, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's great. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, so at so this point in time... BF2 came out in 94, 94. so are, are we talking about like 94, 95 right now? Is so the time yeah, I think so around there. I mean, you know, it kind of like, you know, took a backseat for Street Fighter, especially like Super being such a dud. Yeah, and, I mean, and, 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 and you have to also remember, at this point in time, the meme, which if there were memes back then of Street Fighter can't count to three was huge right it was getting big at that point in time because it was two 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 here's another fifth yeah, version of right. two and everyone's like and even though super turbo was cool but they added supers and back then supers were the scrub mechanic yeah. oh my I'm god oh i can just throw out a random mechanic, super yeah. and yep, hit yep, you yep, with yep. it and then like i'm gonna just jump back and tatsu and build a meter so like 
there was a lot like super turbo the supers were considered like the scrub kind of thing at yeah. that time so you know yeah. at that point in time people were sick of street fighter 2 you know yeah. so so st on launch was not a big deal no it so. wasn't i mean honestly the popularity came like a lot later i mean the hardcores played it but like a lot of the tech you know that was developed is like years years later you know what i mean mm -hmm. we knew like the tech for the original matchups like <clears throat> all the main character matchups and all like you know like the um, the alternate character matchups uh, like Jeff figured out that's super fast. I mean, we we didn't even know that we could pick like other versions of the characters, and yeah. then and then Jeff would just still mm -hmm. play Sagat, and he knew he was you know okay, but you know, and then he'd play like uh, he'd play a boxer all the time, you know. So those are the first two characters he picked, and Jeff was always really good really couple. good at. Uh, Shogundo, you know, I already yeah. mentioned why the Turbo went away in Super because they just never planned to hyper fighting was exactly. was made by the U.S. So that I already went through that. So go back archives, you know. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Jeff was really good at figuring out who was like cheap and broken, and you know, just like exploiting it. And then when he figured out like that, you could actually pick old Sagat. He probably played him for like an hour. He's like, he's the best. <laughs> yeah, he's imagine. the best. You know? uh, yeah. uh, he's the best. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because like he, the, the speed he could get those tiger shots Super out. Fast. Yeah, forget yeah. it, dude. Crazy strong character. He's like, oh, it's too but, good. But how long did it take to figure out that you could pick old characters? I think it, it was within like about a month. Oh, know? really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, because yeah. it, it happened because people would just, just be mashing, mashing on the controllers, and then all of a sudden you'd hear Hadouk and you come in. Where's my super meter? What happened to all my stuff? You know, and like. So people figured out that was a thing. Interesting. And then uh, also, I we, I had the only tech that I had back then was my friends in Japan who mm -hmm. actually, like, so I don't know if you guys know this, but in Japan, what they used to do is, like, and not just for Street Fighter, but they had these books at the arcades, right? Yeah. And they would write strats in the books, you know, and anything they learned, you know, they try to, like, write it in there. To, just like, publicly help. accessible? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really cool. So, I mean, the first time wow, I went I to, like, an that. arcade back then in Champion Edition, I'm like, what's this book, you know? And there are a couple Even little... Champion. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like, people, the, the one arcade I went to, like, Jack and Betty's, had, like, a book, and it was, like, on a string, you know? But, and then there was, like, a pen there, too. And then people would just, like, start writing, like, Dang. random shit. So crazy. So, That's amazing. It's such yeah. an interesting culture because uh, someone even someone scene. at Frosty Faustings even told me that they have a copy of a Kami strategy guide for Super Turbo that was written... By Nakamura, and he j it's all handwritten yeah. with yeah. his own drawings. So there must have been a culture in Japan yeah. where that was just of kind course. of the thing that you yeah. did, right? Wow. So it yeah. was pretty crazy. We were the opposite. <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh, Find, found out something? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. here, you know? Every time you see someone do that fatality in Mortal Kombat, how, how do you do that? that? Oh, so like Zip George, mm -hmm. George for like MK2, uh, he actually, I think he developed this for uh, hyper fighting, right? Mm -hmm, he had a mm -hmm. box that he put over his hand, remember that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we have a friend, he came to the arcade with a box, like a shoe box. With I think, like it was, little I think Schaefer did that, right? Yeah. He did that versus Watson, I think. Yeah. So George, this is like you know, when you had Balrog and like Hyper, and you could oh, do like hold yeah, like the, yeah. the final uh, punch. Uh, uh, uh. You don't want to show people that you're holding that for okay. like 99 seconds. Okay. But wow, uh, that's, I when, like you, it. when you hear a final, you're like, <gasps> and yeah. then you kind of like you know freeze yeah. up and try yeah. to like you know. <laughs> that's great. Hail Mary, and then usually like your life just goes like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. But also for MK, you know, for MK, you didn't want to show anybody the fatalities, so yeah. you bring a box. It was just the weirdest mm. thing, but, you know, that Very actually happened. Yeah, I, yeah I, I agree with people in the chat. I really hope that some of those old guides survive I, yeah, i'm sure they're around I'm somewhere sure. yes, i don't know but that that would be very cool, i mean so. it might be just like in someone's closet right, and then right. they just forgot, forgot about Daigo's it daigo's got this safe you know? yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah. Right? you know yeah. someone's gonna be trying to go through their closet and then they're gonna see the book and they're gonna be like oh my god this book sparks joy and then they're gonna keep it oh, and boy. everything yeah right. exactly so. i just thought that was the coolest thing i mean it was just so different than over here yeah. i remember actually when i saw that i wanted to do that over here you know, like family fun, and then just nobody, nobody was on board with it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, oh, this is a really cool idea I saw over there. We should yeah. probably start doing oh. this too, and just but share tech. And... Just kind of expanding yeah. on that, just so people know. Also, you mentioned it already, Game Fan, a little bit, but you did work for Game Fan magazine. Yeah. You were a layout designer and everything yeah. like that, and they used to make the strategy guides. And Gerald's the one that got me to do the Marvel superheroes right. guide, right? So the so the Marvel superheroes guide, which I did with Anthony, right? right? And so uh, then I also came in and did the uh, um, it was like one of the alpha guides as well. Alpha, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. alpha three, I think, or alpha two that I helped with and everything like that. So, yeah. so my first guide with there was, uh, it started, I think it was like around like 96 or something yeah, like that. But then uh -huh, it was uh -huh. Darkstalkers and then it was a Super Mario guide, which is 
wasn't obviously like fighting game related. Right. But yeah. then, you know, moved to like, uh, we had an Alpha 2 guide and then uh, Marvel superheroes and you're know, the best person I knew at that right, game. Yeah. So, um, we, you were the only person that could do all these combos as well. <laughs> you know, so yeah. like, we literally, were literally recording yeah. videos and he would capture the screenshots of every combo hit, right? Yeah. And then like, seriously, some of the Iron Man combos, he's off the screen. So there's just yeah. a screenshot of like numbers. In fact, yeah. I, I have it downstairs. I should just bring it You got it the tech up. prints? Yeah. I have. I should just on break. Yeah. We'll just do it on break. Okay, 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 okay. Cool, man. So, but yeah, yeah. just this is, I, the only reason why I bring it up because you were like, you said you tried to start the guides and everything. Yeah, and I mean, in a kind of way, you did, right? You ended up working for Game Fan and doing sure. guides there and everything true. like that. So, and that, but, that, that stuff moved online eventually. And yeah, you were eventually. Doing eventually. Yeah, that, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, I think I think just started around like the same time. And, stuff, yeah. and I know Tragic is writing a lot for like, you yeah, know, like Tekken and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So, well, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just very, I'm very curious about this period where, I mean, when I got in in 02, it was definitely a small scene. Was there much of a change in size between 95-ish and, and at that point? Or was it just kind of the same people, new games, but you guys are just the same set of people? Well, I think, uh, you know, it was always like a pretty like hardcore crew, you know, then this, this where like, mm-hmm. you know, everybody realized that was like, people are still playing, realized they got to stick together. You know, we got to like, you know, like, kind of like to preserve this game, preserve the scene. We actually have to like stick together. This is around the time when Alex started coming around. We'd never seen Alex before. Alex showed up, I think, in like 95, 96. And like, you know, Mike, Mike and Jeff were, you know, like two King, of the best players Kings back the then. Roost, yeah. And then, you know, to actually see Mike get corner trapped and, you know, just look like freaking helpless and like, you know, Alpha One, you're like, who the heck is this guy? You yeah, know? Yeah. And then Jeff's like, hey, that, that Mexican kid's pretty good. You yeah. Know? Uh, and then like nice. that. And then, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, well, Jeff doesn't know. No, I, know, I, I, know. Still, <laughs> I still remember because like I heard, I wasn't there at the event, but the, again, these are all secondhand stories, so it's probably all wrong or whatever, but I heard that it eventually won because remember, there was no trip guard in those games, yeah, right? In yeah. Alpha One. So the, 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 it came down to Vi jumping over a fireball with Ken and then Watson went to sweep him when he landed, and he landed with a level three and killed yeah. him. Mm-hmm. And that's how he beat Mike Watson at that tournament. And I just remember someone told me, like, Mike was, like, super mad that, like, some Mexican kid beat him and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, I so. mean, there was a lot of that. We didn't know yeah. who Alex was. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and, you know, when you see yeah. somebody you don't it's know. It's not a very welcoming <laughs> scene. And, 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 and also another thing, too, what's actually crazy about oh, that yeah. is a lot of people think they treat Vi as, like, the old school of the old school. Yeah. But now to hear that he never was even around until alpha like yeah, there yeah. was no vi Ooh, yeah. in street fighter 2 yeah. he was playing it in his say, own yeah, arcades yeah. but he was never part of the competitive scene until alpha one because of southern hills golf land because that was his local arcade and that's where they started oh, he did, oh really yeah that was he just happened to be playing there and i thought that he like everybody else like went to this spot well here's the thing it's like a lot of these places sorry to interrupt by the way no it's, it, um, that was my question the, um a lot of these places just like died off and a lot of these scenes that you'd go to to play like Pico mm. Rivera like it stopped around I think mm. it ended around like the end of like hyper fighting between hyper fighting and super I don't think they they're even around for super so I think hyper fighting was probably like the last version of Pico I if see. I remember correctly um, but then like all these places that had games arcades started closing and people just didn't congregate anymore so okay. there was like no scene mm-hmm. and one of the few places that was still okay. like you know keeping the game up was Southern Hills Okay, you know, so, so, so maybe like Alex had been playing somewhere else, but like other yeah. places it closed and everybody gets filtered We're into We're not sure, yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. got filtered yeah. into there. I've and never then, asked him. You know, we show up as a crew and like we just like the normal people we play against and we'd see some guy that's like, you know, actually pretty good. Be like, oh, that guy sucks, you know. He's like, yeah, he's, like right, he's not of course. good. He's not good. <laughs> he can't win. Like, yeah, yeah, he actually won? What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then sooner or later, we kind of like, you know, just by osmosis, he just like gets into like that crew. Sure, you know? right, yeah. Sure. And the same thing. It's like once you start winning, people respect you yeah. right and so we start talking to him like hey i was pretty good you know this and uh, that and then uh-huh. he just actually became part of like, like that scene yeah you know you know alpha 2 is like i think that was like alex's breakout yeah. game you know and that's and, when it became the vi versus john Choi. at least that yeah. was the because that's when the the internet started building up so that's when agsf2 really started 
during Alpha 1 is when AGS2 started Alt. getting Games. big. SF2. Right, which is the news group. And then that's when people were talking about John Choi and Alex Vai and who would be better. Now, John Choi had been good up in Northern California for a while, but obviously we're here in Southern California. Yeah. And it's just not like it is nowadays. Like yeah. the NorCal, SoCal, six-hour drive apart, might as well have been in another country. For sure. Yeah. We just didn't know anything about those it's guys. It's like a secluded really. island over there. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, hear we, they're good over there. Yeah, yeah, we knew about like Graham Wolf and like Thomas Osaki and a little yeah, they've been guys. playing since SF2. Right, so you guys had run into them a few times, but at this point, like, who was John Choi? Who was all these guys? And I still even remember, I I loved low-tier matchups, and I was like a birdie player in Alpha 1 because he was the grappler, and I, he couldn't beat Guy, but I thought I could beat Guy, right? Okay. And someone's like, dude, there's this guy in NorCal named John Choi who uses Guy, he'll destroy you. I was like, I'll beat him. You know, I was like, that's just how it was <laughs> yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought I would beat him, but... Yeah. Alpha 2, I mean, you know, Vi like, discovered for himself, you know, the custom combo, the yeah, unblockable uh, custom uh, combo. Vi, CC, and, yeah. you you know, he was he was a fantastic player right. during that time. Like you know, ninety six and then ninety seven. Alex is also playing a lot of Tekken. I don't people I don't know right. if people yeah. realize oh, he, yeah. was he was a really Tekken really national champion. He was the Tekken national champion. I still have that that video on eight millimeter somewhere. I recorded that tournament in NorCal on eight millimeter, eight millimeter, something like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Just don't say six years, oh, six and dang. a half years. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is that actually Charles? Uh, might be. The real Chazzy says, this is Charles that ran the World's Fire. We just mentioned you, yeah, actually. Mm. <laughs> Did so he? he said ran tournaments oh. through Super Turbo. Now, the only reason why I think that they, I okay. remember that they did run tournaments through there, because I think MK tournaments were there at some point, an MK2 okay. tournament, okay. because I remember people talking about this young kid who was really good at MK2, who was an upstart, like this really like weird like Filipino kid or whatever, shirts. Like OG shirts, yeah. Jason DeHarris was actually like one of those guys. So What's going go. on, Charles? Wow, man, that's awesome, cool. That's so okay. So I'm sorry, I forgot about that. I didn't that remember if it was around until '94ish, '95ish. So I when mean, did when did the world's that, finest close? Is, can we talk to the chat? Is that cool? Yeah, of course. Yeah, is that actually Brianna? He, my one of my best friends, like uh, uh, nieces. That's crazy because nobody nobody could say that and actually know. Except for actually her. That's, that's okay. That's crazy. That's that, that, dang. That's crazy. I, that's wild to me that she's watching this right now. Pretty cool. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> so eight millimeter. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Eight millimeter. <laughs> Anyways, um, for the people that don't know, Alex is super good at Tekken, and uh, there was one person that the uh, the most competitive player for him. By the way, he says ninety nineteen ninety six is when tournaments is when it closed. Okay, 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 okay. Is closed. I see, I see. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I stopped going. I think maybe I went like a little bit in super or hyper fighting. I think hyper fighting would have been the last. But uh, yeah, I just, um, you know, I think a lot of people just stopped, stopped going for the most part. Mm -hmm. Dang. You know, it wasn't like it was, you know, like, I mean, Charles will tell you like Street Fighter 2 and then Champion Edition. It was just like, it was packed. I mean, there are people pouring out. There's so many people in there that they're just standing in front of the store, you know? You, it was just it was just packed with comic books and people. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And so small. It was so sure, small, sure. dude. Yeah. I remember, like there was they didn't even have the tech where you put the monitor on top of the cabinet. Mm. So it was literally everyone's just like, yeah, oh yeah. And well, you can imagine you know, how good that actually <laughs> smelled, by the way. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Right. And, and keep in mind, behind the cabinet was probably about this much room. For sure, yeah. Like, like literally the wall back there, here. There's also so, this. Yeah, you know, there's uh, one one thing I hated when people would like put their hand up on the machine. You know, like they're uh -huh, leaning, uh -huh. and you're just like, dude, come on, man. Yeah, because uh -huh, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in those in those early days, why was it that that arcade was the one that became strong? I'm not sure. I mean, just, honestly, I, I guess maybe one was going to be strong, and that's the one that happened. I mean, that might have just been where Tomo lived near. And so he, since he was the best, they said, "Oh, let's just grab everybody into this environment," and that's where he played. Right? That's almost how it always. That's why Southern Hills Golf Plan got so big because that's where Vi played. And so Vi, being the best, he didn't have to travel anywhere. He was just going to beat everyone. So in order to fight him, got you it. had to go to him. Right? So I honestly think it's because uh, Charles like spent the time to organize a community, it's and he made a, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he made a leaderboard. He made a leaderboard, and people that meant a lot to people, you know. Right. Sure. And that's that like sense. no, no, yeah. like other arcade was actually like taking the time to like you know officially run tournaments and you know like really organize this stuff. And that's, Dude, there's I, a lot to it. I right? was I sure. wanted to get on the because at one point they even had a leaderboard for every individual character. And I didn't go to Pico enough, but I remember the first time I went there, I was like, I'm getting on that Honda board because Honda was my main character in mm -hmm. Street Fighter 2, and he was kind of low tier, right? No one used him. Street so Fighter 2? Yeah. Well, at, no, George, George is number five. Right. So, so 
at the time for what we knew. Oh, okay, you know what okay, I mean? Okay. Hon- no one played Honda at that time in our scene. And so I, I was see, like I one see. of the only Honda players that was yeah. there. So I really wanted to play him. So I That's how I met George. I mean, his Honda was so ridiculously cheap, yeah. you know. And then he took out like half the cast with just like two buttons, you yeah. know. He just sit there and just jab, jab. No jab, hurt right. box yeah, on yeah. my jab. Right. Well, no you, hurt you box. kept that, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, going back to uh, Dang, you know so the Charles Alpha Two, me. Okay. Alpha Two, and like Tekken days. Yes. Um, I will at one point, you know, bump down that video so you could you could see it. And Alex, uh, he, they they brought I think like the two top you know Japanese players uh, before that time, which was uh, it was uh, Hayashida and Dozono. They were like I think like two of the Japanese champions. They brought them down, and then this this Korean guy, who wasn't actually the the top Korean guy, he was actually number three. But by default, like I think, like when you turn 21 in Korea, you gotta join the army. Right. Mm-hmm. So like by default, those guys had to stop playing. So then number three guy became like number one. Okay. That mm-hmm. guy was ridiculous. Back okay. Then. Mm-hmm. Mark Markman, if uh, if you're in the chat or somebody knows, I don't remember the guy's name. Uh-huh. But, Flo uh, says Siok. Shock. Yeah, yeah. Okay, was Shock, okay, yeah. okay, okay. He was insane. He was like the first one. We'd never seen any like you know just like the um you know like uh, Okizeme and like you know getting around the back tech with Horang. Um... This guy was insane, okay, dude. Okay, okay. And uh, he was he was just really really good. Alex actually beat like Hayashida and Dozano in tournament, but um, when it came to that guy, I remember in like practice, Alex was beating everybody. I think he had like you know like 15, 20 game win streak, uh, uh, and he uh, actually beat that that Korean dude. Right. right? He beat uh, him off, uh, and the guy uh, had to, the guy was pissed. He had to wait in line for like another like 30, 40 minutes. Right. Yeah. yeah. As, and then as when the he walk got, of shame to the change when, machine. Yeah, yeah. When he got back on there, he like double perfected Alex. Dude. <laughs> yeah. It was insane, dude. It was like we're like, dang. Yeah. What is it about Korea that was so Tekken heavy? It was yeah. so weird. I'm not sure. And then back then it was like. Um, I think he was saying like the the number one like this this guy was like so ridiculously good and we couldn't even imagine him like losing because he was like yeah. so far ahead of everybody else and then we'd ask him about like and he's like oh I'm I'm actually not that good in Korea I'm like number three you know and he's like number one number two they're I can't touch them <laughs> so I mean he's a really really nice humble guy but uh, you know just to see how what level he was at yeah. at that game and just to like like listen to him like you know just like speaking so highly of like right. the number one and two guys we're just like completely blown away yeah. that's so yeah. cool that there are these little moments where you get like a some window into how it's going in yeah. other countries well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shemuruku mentions the ban but the thing is tekken is a japanese game and it was all japanese yeah. games that were banned in korea mm-hmm. so i don't know how that would have saved tekken unless they just made a specific korean version i'm of not the sure how it worked but i mean it's I why think... they got all in the pc games right? well so... Shemuruku says that they think namco got a deal with the korean oh. government i've never heard about that that's fascinating if yeah. you have any way to know more about that i would love yeah, to know it's one of the reasons why it's one of the reasons why korea got so good at all the pc games because all japanese games are banned for there yeah. so they the, the american games weren't yeah. so they just played all the pc games and stuff. well so. i mean they i mean i know in tekken they had a pretty big rivalry like korea and japan you yeah. know like back then uh-huh. they would have like i think like the, they would have like some like you know giant trophy that go like back and forth or whatnot for um i, I don't really remember the specifics the Tekken players probably know a lot better than me. Yeah. But for Virtua Fighter, I do know that, like, you know, the best player for Maximum Battle, which is the Virtua Fighter 3 uh, tournament, was uh, Akira mm-hmm. Kid. So he was a Korean player, and this kid was, like, I think, like, 13 or 14. Oh. He went to the national tournament in Japan, and he just, you know, won it. Isn't he the one that yeah. used the, 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 the unsafe Akira move and yeah. just, like, blew up? Ev- because everyone was like, this move sucks, and then he, like, dominated everybody. It wasn't really, it wasn't really an unsafe move. It was basically, uh, his, his stepping was, he had this insane stepping, uh-huh. and almost, like, in, like, clockwork, he would get hit by, like, uh, he would get hit by, like, a rising attack. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But he'd shake out of it so fast, by the time they'd try to mm. approach him and take advantage, he'd spot him, you know? Uh-huh. He does it like five or six times in the tournament. Jeez, yeah, okay, but okay, it was him and okay. Ige Lao, which are like the two best Korean players. They dominated the entire like Japanese circuit, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and nobody had ever been used to like that type of play. <laughs> and then even like the former pro players for VF2 were trying to challenge him, and this little kid is just beating up everybody. Right. You know? mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I mean, I think obviously in like VF4, VF5, things changed. You know, like obviously Japan is like a lot more. Do- I'm not sure if they didn't release the game or whatnot, or just like oh. you know, the scene died in Korea. But for like three, it was like insane. I mean, that kid was just ridiculous. Were so, there any moments? What's the legend of Akira Boy? I mean, Flo was asking. Akira you, Kid. Akira Kid, yeah. What is the legend of it? Or What do you mean, what's the legend? I don't know. Or That's was what it just Flo what you was described, asking. maybe? Yeah, yeah what, what I mean. Oh, I, guess, yeah. I guess we just, I guess maybe it was the chat delay Could or something been, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's basically it. I mean, he was like, he uh, like entered like the brackets in maximum battle. 
you know, because they had like a national tournament. I think they mm -hmm. had two slots for Korea, and then Korea actually ended up winning like the number one or number two. Damn, oh, yeah. so. The best wow. thing about that too, a lot of people don't know this too, but uh, you know, the story in Virtua Fighter, right? Every time they had the new game, when they had two and three, they would have a national tournament, and whoever won that tournament, that character was the winner of the tournament story-wise. So in VF2, whoever won with that character, like that character became the champ, was the champion Whoa. in the next game. Yeah, I didn't know that. Exactly that is cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, it's a little, nobody really talks, well, nobody really plays Virtua Fighters. So. Right. <laughs> Except me. I love it. Were, were there any other moments in that, you know, early to mid-90s when you got to see sort of the Japanese or the Korean or any other countries come to the U.S. and play? Or just no. those, the couple? The first did... international tournament, as far as I know, was like the, the Tekken, the Namco, the one Namco threw in NorCal mm -hmm. in 97. And uh, that was like the first, like, you know, properly planned international tournament. Right. We thought it was oh, amazing. Not, not necessarily a tournament, although that sounds cool. I'd like to talk about that. But, like, just somebody coming from Japan. He's yeah, they're just visiting so remember, in L.A. Like... When Daigo came to play Vae, yeah. we didn't know who was going to win. Yeah. At that time, it was still very unknown on on Japan versus U.S. And when was, was that? It was such a big deal. It was Alpha 3. 96, 7? Something like that. It was 98, right? 98. Oh, it was so. one of the events that I did not make it to that I've regretted my whole life. It's, like, one of the big fighting game things that I didn't go to and where... You know, the tragics push some buttons Cole came from, you know, <laughs> yeah, because they basically all played a uh, exhibitions against Daigo and he used Guy yeah. and he just locked Cole down into the corner with Guy and he destroyed him in tragic just yelled, push some buttons Cole. And, like, <laughs> well, and then of course, you know, I watched the VHS of this because people recorded huh? it and yeah. I'm like, I could play Guy like that. You yeah. Know, it's the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. same yeah. shit, dude. Yeah. I was all but, like, about were there, that. Were there... Just players who came to hang out, not maybe not just from Japan no. or Korea, but like, was there players from Latin America who came? Or no, because like, the thing just is, very little movement? even if they visited, how would you even find the yeah. scene? Right? Yeah. Like, you literally well, just... Uh, yeah, that, I just mean like, maybe one representative comes from a scene and they are really good, and you're like, whoa! But the, the thing about it is, if they visited, we would have never known if they visited our country, and two, if they visited, they could have never found the scene. Right, Because okay. there's just no... There was no okay. place to make would that communication. Chance, yeah, yeah. uh-huh. The furthest you'd get is, like, maybe, like, uh, Jason McClone from Las Vegas, or occasionally get somebody from, like, you know, I think, like, back east to come to, like... I think a, uh, a couple times... Maybe to like world's finest, you get like some guy that showed up, but maybe he was okay. It wasn't like fantastic right, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. A couple, the a couple of, like these strong guys that I've only seen like once or twice. That uh, Charles fed to Tomo, um, you know, he did. He fed him. He fed like they they demanded like I want term Tomo first round. Yeah, you know? it's like okay, here you go, and then uh, never see that guy again. You know? yeah. <laughs> I still remember the first Pico tournament I went to. He killed someone with only yeah. light kick. He was just like, I'm just gonna beat you with light kick. But I mean, honestly, I think Namco did a fantastic job, like orchestrating that, and uh, really, you know, getting like the players together. I think that was the birth of like international mm. tournaments. Other than that, it was just uh, you know like uh, Tony Tom and you know B three B one B two B three Evo. I mean, those are the guys you know other than Namco that actually like took the time to like you know make yeah. this stuff happen. What year was that? At the start, I think it was uh, was it 98, 96, 90, 96, 97, 98 around yeah, there. Yeah, so ninety nine, I believe, was B before right i was b3 right 99 oh no oh it was 99 b3 oh god you're right anybody right. flow no 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 night b3 was 95 or 96 because i was it was my first year of college that i went there before was, was 2000 okay before was 2000 okay, b3 yeah. was 96 yes. according to wikipedia oh, so okay. yeah no for sure <laughs> because, they're wrong. Oh, no, no 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 i just think it's cool it's, like it's we're awesome. talking about yeah, these ancient awesome. stories where like nobody had any information and now it's on wikipedia right because like, it's, like it's honestly that was like one of the first times that my brother and i had driven a really long distance and you know being asian our parents were really strict but it actually benefited finally that me and my brother were good kids our entire lives because then we were like, we want to drive up to Northern California. It's a six hour drive and all this stuff. And my parents were like, sure, whatever, go for it. But then, uh, with, uh, then we came up for a tragic, the gathering as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 And that's when, that we came up, that's when we came up with, uh, Calvin and Kevin, yeah, our yeah. other friends who came with us. And that, that road trip was hilarious, dude. I have so many road trip stories on that yeah. one. For, for that one, for 97, it was me, Alex, Mark Acero and Mr. Wizard. <laughs> yeah. Marcus Cero foot yeah. main. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was uh, that was a lot of fun. That was really yeah, really a lot yeah. of fun. 
But Tragic the Gathering was, oh man, that was that's a whole story. I mean, maybe we should take a break and then we can yeah, do the Yeah, we tra- got the sure. photos and everything and we could talk about Tragic Yeah, the you want to get whatever it was downstairs? Uh, I can grab the Marvel superhero stuff. But I mean, like, I might save that for another stream okay, or something sure, like yeah. that because there's just a lot to look at here. Okay. And I don't want to, I, I don't want to like spend all that. We've got him. We want to yeah, tell the Gerald stories and stuff like that. So, you don't you know. Know. <laughs> I don't want all of those. Okay, but let's take a quick break, sure. and then when we come back, we'll go through some of these photos, and we'll talk about Tragic the Gathering. Cool, so. man. Okay. All right. Be right back, guys. Be right back. Oops. All right, we're back here. Hey! And, How's it going, guys? Uh, we are going to eat a little bit of food here, so... Uh, Maybe more than a little bit, to be fair. Yeah, okay, so David is eating uh, a freaking tofu uh, non bomb here. This is all the food from the Okamoto kitchen here. So I just want to put this on here. Mm. I mean, Gerald Gerald said this it's is very not good. necessary, but I've I had before, I but it's very good. This. So this is the this is the tofu non bomb right here. Uh, this one is the chicken katsu non bomb. That's mine right katsu there. Katsu curry sandwich. Katsu curry sandwich. Sorry, yeah, not, not non bomb, my bad. And there's David's right there. That doesn't even look like tofu. God, I gotta try yeah, that one these days. And then this is a JFC, but this is the vegetarian version. So this is brand right new. Here. This is yeah. made out of cauliflower. Cauliflower, yep. That's crazy. Marinated the same way as the chicken, but you know, obviously vegetarians. You've got some so. mayonnaise dipping sauce. Got some could, Okamoto uh, sauce. Where some, you, you could put some lemon on it and dip dip in the mayo, or you could mm-hmm. have the Okamoto sauce. All right, I'm gonna try for the sauce. Yeah, first. try for the mayonnaise here. So there we go. Or even if you eat it as as it is, it's still pretty good. That is really good. Mm. It was really good. Look, I'm not a vegetarian guy, but this is really good. I'm, I mean, I'm not technically, I'm not literally a vegetarian, but I tip. I often eat veggie because I don't want to mix mm-hmm. milk and meat for Jewish reasons. Um, this is very good. Yeah, very good. Is, indeed. Thank you very much, guys. This is this is actually kind of ridiculous. I remember one of the things that I used to get at your truck all the time was the tofu stack. And, mm-hmm. like, that was another vegetarian option. And it's like, all your vegetarian options were always so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's not my doing. It's uh, cheesy to my Well, of course. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Of course. Yeah. I'm just here for entertainment. <laughs> and taste testing. My oh. wife is a pastry chef, and I'm constantly having to be the guinea, the guinea pig oh my for God. new food. I feel for you. It's now. terrible. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and every once in a while, like they have to get rid of their pastries because they don't want to eat all of it. Yeah. So David has to bring them here and give them to me. Man, what suffering that I have to go through. It's true. It's tough life. Anyway, yeah, we're eating. Um, <laughs> what were we about to get into? What were we about to talk about? Tragic what? the Gathering. <clears throat> Tragic the Gathering. Mm-hmm. I don't know much about this at all. So really? Yeah. Well, after, I wasn't there. After B three. Yeah. It was so fun. We loved it. We didn't have another tournament. So Tragic just said, the hell of it. Let's just do Tragic the Gathering. Well, introduce Tragic. So Tragic, uh, a.k.a. Ben Curitan, long time guy. You guys know him as the Street Fighter V Evo announcer right now. He's the guy who's always doing, let's get ready for Street Fighter. You know, that's him, basically. He's been doing that at Evo for years. Yeah. Before, yeah, before, before SF5. Years. Yeah. For years. And um, he's been in the scene for a very, very long time. As you mentioned, he was one of the best. Uh, uh, you know, he, he was always really good at like Virtua Fighter and Tekken and stuff like that. He kind of tried to write a lot of doc, you know, tech and stuff like that for those games and everything. So um, he was one of the guys who was at B3, and then he was like, "Hey, let's just do another gathering." And so he basically did Tragic the Gathering. I don't know how he convinced his parents to do this. By the way, I think they're out of town. Or they out I'm of not town? sure. Okay. He probably he obviously knows better than me. But. Right, because <laughs> he ended up basically letting like 50 FGC people, or well, whatever FGC was back then, to stay at his house. Yeah, and it was just like everybody was, was tournament at his house. Yeah, well, it wasn't even a tournament. We're it was just, just, it was just it was gathering just everyone, people playing games. And yeah. in fact, one of the main games that whole weekend that was being played was Bomberman. 
They played right, a right, ton right, of right, eight-player yeah. Bomberman. Oh my God, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I mean that Alpha Two. Uh, yeah. You know Tekken. Marvel some Super some Heroes. VF in the arcade. Yeah. Is, this, is this all consoles? It's all consoles except we'd also go to like you know Southern or uh, Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunnyvale uh-huh. and like you know play some games there as well. Mm-hmm. So we had like um, you know. Had, had fun, but I think for the most part, we just stayed at his place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so me and my brother and my two friends that we all drove up, we stayed in our own hotel room off to the side, you know. And then we would just go to Tragic's place and play, basically. And yeah, um, man, that place was crowded. It's so weird because I think I spent most of my time at Sunnyvale. Like, I was very rarely at Tragic's house. I was mostly How long did this last? Right. It was like a weekend. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was like I think like three days, two or three days, or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Good old days for sure. And everybody was uh, young and thin back then. <laughs> or... <laughs> yeah, and Flo is talking about everybody. So Ben, I'm sorry if you're in the chat, but I always say this. But everybody always has a tragic story. Yeah, that's my joke. Basically, it's true. It's everybody true, yeah. has a tragic story. My I... tragic story actually happened during Tragic the Gathering. Yeah, so. uh-huh. yeah. and my tragic. St- story i've told which he was on the stream and he insisted was not how it happened okay but then i had someone else confirm with me that it is exactly how i described <laughs> it so um but i mean look tra- just to get it out of the way tragic has a temper problem he knows it he's you know he's done things to deal with it he's he, he knows yeah. he's tried to do anger yeah. management and all this stuff like that so you know he's fully aware of it and stuff like that and he's done a lot of stuff he's so a great guy otherwise like he did like gamecombos.com he did he was the one who created dust loop which is still being used at this point in time i didn't know he created that yeah he created dust loop uh mm-hmm. because he was really into guilty gear at one point so tragic was also very good at he's that one guy there's always those guys right Li Joe's one of them. Tragic is another one. They're the best player at the game when the game comes out. Uh-huh. And so when Guilty Gear came out, when Soul Calibur came out, all those games, when Virtua Fighter, he was always one of the best at it for okay. a while. Then eventually he would get surpassed, and then he would quit the game because he would get mad and stuff like that. But again, that's just the competitive nature. I'm not trying to talk smack about Tragic. Yeah. It's just it's just how it kind of happened. So, but yeah, he he just decided to make this gathering and. And yeah, I almost got you two into a big old fight about yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. I forgot who I asked. I think I was asking <laughs> Tragic or I asked you. and Because like, he was known as being really good at Virtua Fighter. You obviously had just come back from Japan, so you were like super good at Virtua Fighter. I was playing a lot of VF at that point. Yeah. And, I mean, just like super duper hardcore. And, right. um, you know, I went up there like maybe like a couple months before and I played with him and a couple other people. And, you know, like we play and, and when I'd win, I felt like, you know, I would... Um, Ben would get upset, right? You know what yeah. I mean. So uh, I, I didn't want to go like you know I kind of like ease off the throttle a little, little bit, right? You know because like I don't look. I mean this dude's like putting me up at his place, and like I'm hanging out with him, and like I'm not just gonna beat him down. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So mm-hmm. I would ease off, and then next thing I heard on IRC, it's like that I suck or I'm not that good or something right. like that. So because like you were standing there at one point, and I think I asked you, I was like, because both of you were super good. And so I was curious to see, like, how that was going to pair out. Right. And I think I asked you, I was like, so how is Tragic, right? And you were like, he's not actually very good. That's and already think, when we already got mad at each other. Right, and okay. Tragic was, like, right off to the side. And he was like, what? And he, he overheard it. I didn't know he was standing there. I was, I was already started... pissed at that point. Oh, you, know? you were? Oh, so okay, okay. At that okay, point, okay. We, had, uh, we had this... Uh, <laughs> Gerald, like, waits for Tragic to walk around the corner. Yeah, I know, he's right? So yeah. I, was, I, I was already, like, you know, I was already, like, seeing red. Because, like, he was just talking so much smack. So, mm-hmm. uh, at this point, like, this is the second time I told you when I was up there before. And, um, you know, he, like, just no respect, you know, like, he thought that, like, the games I was, like, you know, just, like, giving were, like, he was actually winning, you know, and some he did, I'm not saying he didn't, you know, I gave away every single game, yeah. but, you know, hearing back on IRC through another person that, you know, I'm, I was just whatever, yeah. you know, and, and this other dude had crushed me, then when Tragic the Gathering, like, rolled around, I'm like, all right, dude, I'm not letting anybody win anything, it's going to be 100% no mm-hmm. prisoners, mm-hmm. I don't care man woman and child they're going down you know <laughs> and that's all i did i mean i just like, regulated and i played as hard as i could and i don't care what anybody I did that. and i think like with like at that point i had like 27 or 28 wins with shun but then again with like akira mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. like you know 15 16 and we had like you know it was john Choi and like kevin like mm-hmm, a bunch of other people mm-hmm. and then ben was one of those guys and he's first like oh well, why don't you why don't you fucking pick somebody else i'm like well it's not mortal Kombat. i can't change my character you know right. what i mean uh-huh. i gotta lose yeah, right. and that really set him off, um, <laughs> as it would. Regulated. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
as it would. <laughs> the and then um, like, yeah. Mark, Mark Acero, Flipman, um, you know, I look back and like, I think like, you know, this had been going on for like some time already. Um, ben had like, he had had his like house keys, but like he got upset and he like smashed him against the ground, right? So like I think his keychain broke and he lost his house keys because they're like under like a machine in like the oh, arcade. Man. So I look back and this dude's like moving like machines like out in the arcade. I'm like, dude, what's he doing, man? Yeah. He's like, oh, he lost his house keys and he can't get back. Oh in. my god. So I mean, that's the funniest shit I've ever heard. At that yeah. Point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I feel bad, you know. I feel bad, like you know, yeah. like even saying anything. Yeah. But he kept talking more and more. It's like, oh, you're just a scrub. All you do is this one move and this and that. And then that's when James came up and he made it even worse. Right. You know? Yeah. I see. Uh-huh. Uh, I instigated And James it. just he just kept like fanning that fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was so bad at that because even at B3, I've always told that story that like someone asked me, they're like, so because John Choi, uh, Chris Finney from Canada and Vi were like the guys that were supposed to be super good that were showing up. And, um, you know, Chris Finney, it wasn't Chris Finney, it was actually, it turned out to be another person from Canada who on AGSF2 kept talking shit about Chris Finney who turned out to be right because he was like the best guy, right? He came from Canada. He was super good. From where in Canada, do you remember? I don't remember now. But it was like those three then was that Canada guy, John and Vi were like the big names. And John didn't impress me as much as, because that's just how John Choi does. Like he's the guy who has the John Choi route. He goes the loser's bracket first round. He wins tournament. So he just doesn't turn it on like until he really needs to. It's weird. And I remember someone asked me, like, so what do you think of all the players? I'm like, Vi and that Canada guy are really good. But John <laughs> Choi, he's like kind of okay. And I turn around and John Choi is like staring <laughs> at me. He's just looking at me. And I was like, uh, well, I, uh, I don't know. How do you? Like that was like my first interaction with John Choi. And I was like, God damn it. Oh, <laughs> That's God. great. Oh, so God. good. So I'm so bad job. at this, dude. I just yeah. do this shit to myself so. too. So. <laughs> Anyways, I had actually left the game there. You know, I, I got so upset oh, wow. that, I mean, he was just like talking all this crap and I'm like, and I had come all the way from Los Angeles just to yeah. play, just to play VF with it. Cause like, you know, we didn't really have much of a scene yeah. and I was happy that there were like a lot of people I'd never played before and I got to play them. Of course. And, uh, you know, it just, I just got sick of, t- I, I got sick of hearing it. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm leaving. I just left my game there started walking back to my car. I was going to drive back to LA and then Ben did something really, really awesome. He uh, he walked out after me in the arcade. He's like, "Look, man, I'm just a, I'm just a jerk, man. You know, you don't have to leave because of me." Dude. He's like, "Please don't leave." Aww. He actually said that, dude. It was, was sweet, dude. I almost <laughs> cried, dude. Yeah, I almost yeah. cried. That. It was really <laughs> cool. As one of the coolest things Tragic's ever done. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. It's like I said. I mean, the, the, it's like when we tell these stories, it sucks Aww. because it makes Tragic sound bad and all these things like that. But again. He's fully aware. He's of a good problem. dude. Yeah, and, and, just, he's yeah. just really passionate about the game. Yeah, and you, you, as a person who's grown up with a temper myself, I totally get it. Like his is a little more extreme than mine, yeah. but I mean, people have seen me on stream, dude. I was streaming Spider Man just last week, and I was like, profanity is all over the place, dude. Do you, just... you know what's funny is I was streaming, and mm-hmm. somebody in my chat was like, "Man, I was watching James play Spider Man yesterday, mm-hmm. and like, I think his cats were like getting scared because he was yelling so much." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. I'm sure yeah, that they're uh-huh. used to it. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it's no, uh-huh. no surprise. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I've just always been... So, like I said, I have a lot of sympathy for what Tragic goes through. Because, yeah, I mean, like I, I think said, everybody gets to that point. Yeah, because, you know? I mean, I've had a bad temper. I used to be the guy that punched controls at the arcade. Like, I would get mad. I'd just be like, bam, bam, because it's not my machine, right? Like, I was one of those guys. So, uh, Street Fighter is actually the game that forced me to start having to make my temper better mm. because before street fighter 2 i won everything i was just like the best at every video game with all my friends it didn't matter what we played i would be everyone all the time and everything even if i played board games i would be everyone yeah. all i was just like the best at everything so yeah, i was yeah. always like i'm the best at everything and then street fighter 2 really introduced me to the fact that i just i'm not the best yeah and it, it, i had to really learn to curb my temper so sure as bad as my temper is right now, I tell everybody, it's like it's nothing compared to how it is. Hey, baby. I had that Tekken 7 Rage video uh, where I got mad. I just, like, screamed because, like, that guy caught me with the, the snake edge. She's never let me hold her before. Because <laughs> you got food. Because right you got food, Probably. yeah. Probably, yeah. Okay, didn't last for long. Yeah. That's all right. But, um, but I showed that video to my best friend, right? And he watched me get mad at Tekken. He was like, 
and because <laughs> my best friend we've played mario kart together okay that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say so well, i think many of us had that experience where we were like the best of our little crew in whatever and then you get to the larger fgc whatever that means for me it was just going to like a strong arcade finally after right. playing with my friends um and you're not the best and now you now you have to actually learn and like get good and that's it's a humbling experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, there are people, useful. I think people take it different ways. You know, it really depends on the person. Like I said, yeah. oh, yeah, it's like, course. you know, Some people like, get turned off. Yeah, when uh, when I lost to Roger as bad as I did, I was so excited because that just meant there was like so much more to learn. I totally know what you mean. You know, mm-hmm. but then there are people like, oh, screw this. That guy's an idiot or he's cheesing. Right. Or uh, he's, he's playing a way I can't win. So I'm just going to try to say something about obvi- it to make myself and, and feel better. You and know? it's obviously not my fault that I'm losing. Not. It's the game's fault because this yeah. character's broken yeah. or whatever. Blah, course, blah, yeah, course, so. yeah. And that's something that'll never, ever die as long as oh, like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And, and, you know, and again, that's why it took a while before George started talking to me because he was beating me at first, you know, but then yeah. I just got better. And then at, at, to the point where I was starting to beat like matchups that I shouldn't be beating. Mm-hmm. And so at that point in time, you know, he had that realization that I wasn't just some chump that yeah. was just going to fold and Good stuff work. like that. So there you go. My, my, the arcade that I started playing at, the barricade at Berkeley, uh, was just the, the arcade that um, Ricky used to go to and John Choi used to go to and a whole mm-hmm. bunch of players in the Northern California area used to go to. So it just happened to be like a really strong arcade. Right, randomly, yeah, you know? uh-huh. It could have just been a bumpkin arcade. But right, like, right, right. It wasn't, and that's that's basically why I'm here. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> didn't you say like Ricky like beat you in a tournament, or you beat Ricky in a in a? It was like a. Oh, the first tournament I ever won was over Ricky. Yeah. <coughs> okay, okay. It was in KOF 2003. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that game that Ricky is well known for playing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But like obviously Ricky didn't care about. Uh, and I, I mean, none of us played that game for real because it was mm-hmm. clearly not good. You know, mm-hmm. like we figured it out instantly. This game's not great, but yeah, that was my first ever tournament. <laughs> That's funny. So I think we got. I uh, want to check out some of those pictures. Uh, well, TTG while we're still on it. Let's talk a little bit more. I guess. Oh, well, I don't know if there's anything else. So one of the stories because we got food up here, so I don't sure, want to sure, bring sure. the photos up here yet. So one of the stories that no we were talking about before we started the stream mm-hmm. was that at that time I was god of Marvel superheroes. Right. 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 Because I had written the FAQ. I was the person who publicized air combos. Because in Coda, nobody realized you could super jump cancel all normals. And so I would do air combos with Colossus. I figured out that I could do heavy kick launch. Him. Oops, sorry. Blech. I'm spitting food everywhere. Doing I figured out you could do uh, like... food coming out of Yeah, the... I know, right? <laughs> that you could launch me with a heavy kick super jump cancel, go up into the air and keep the combo going. That was unheard of at the time. Yeah. So when Marvel Super Heroes came out, I was already ahead of the game, and so I was figuring out how to do a lot of that stuff. I wrote the FAQ. What, what year was that? It's um, like 97. Yeah, think. something yeah. around there. 96, and, uh, 97. There was, um, there was uh, a, a very famous CES. Uh, was it before it was E3? It was just CES, right? It was E3 branched off of CES. So CES used to just be had a little small video game oh, presence. Oh, I didn't there. realize it had branched off. Okay. Yeah, and so um, Capcom had a tournament there for Marvel superheroes, and I just got a pass in there because I think it might have been one of you guys who yeah. helped me get it. Was one yeah, of the game fan so, guys yeah. who got because I was definitely a game fan employee. That wasn't my name. That was there. Yeah. But then like I went to go play in the little Marvel superheroes tournament there. And the only person there who was... Everybody there was just a businessman. Okay. So everyone sucked. The only person that was there that was actually decent was uh, BBH. Lord BBH, oh, wow. right? And so I ended up playing him in Grand Finals. And uh, I ended up... But, like, all the way there... Like, everyone playing was just like, what's going on? Whatever. And then I came up to the game, and I picked Spider-Man, and all of a sudden it was like, jump, air combo, da 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 dash da 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 And I just did it, and all the, all the crowd was like, oh my god, what the hell yeah. is going on? And basically, I ended up winning that tournament with Shuma Gorath versus BBH. And uh, they gave me a bunch of keychains. They gave me a free copy of Resident Evil 1 on the PlayStation 1. And the guys were like, dude, thanks for demoing our game like yeah, that. They yeah, were like yeah. super happy that I made the game look so crazy cool. and stuff like that. So, you know, I was known as the Marvel superheroes guy. And like very few people could beat me in that game because I just knew the game better than yeah. everyone else. Right. There was another guy named Spider Dan who was really inter- interested in the game as well. He was really big into the game. Uh, he's in Bang the Machine. He's like one of the guys in Bang, Bang the Machine. But while I was there playing um, 
Marvel's no Marvel superheroes weren't even there. I was playing X Men Street Fighter at the time, and I was beating up somebody over there who kept insisting that like my combos were scrubby and that I could just memorize buttons as well. And then he was like, every, every super you could mash for more hits. And I was like, Saber, Saber Tooth? And he was like, except for that one. You know, like, it was just yeah. like one of those situations yeah. again. But then Dan came over with the Marvel Super Heroes board. He's like, I want to challenge you, James. Board. I want to be the king of Marvel Super Heroes. I'm like, what? And so we sat down and played. He beat me one game. He's like, I'm the best. And then he took up stuff and he disappeared. That L- was it. Literally yeah. one game. One game. Mm-hmm. I mean, James is like, I think you were playing more. And you're just like, basically, you don't want to pick Spider-Man versus Spider-Man. Right. You know? I, mean, uh, you're just, I, I played Shuma like, because yeah. Shuma was my favorite character course, in that course, game, right? Of course, of course. the coolest looking character yeah, yeah, in the game. Uh-huh. So. But, I mean, we obviously know like who is you know, way better at the game and way more versed. <laughs> but, you know, in his mind, you know, Dan thought he won. You know? Yeah, I hadn't even been practicing that game. I hadn't been playing it. You know, he just came and he was like, played me. And after he won, he just took his machine and he took That's it crazy. And that was it. And that was the end. So he was, to him, he was the king of Marvel superheroes. Hey, whatever that makes time. people feel better. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for feeling better, you know. <laughs> oh, man. But, I mean, to be fair, I mean, it's all I want, because the thing about it is, one, even yeah. back in those days, I just wanted to do the stupid shit. And all I wanted to yeah. do was anti-air his jump with the activation of Chaos Dimension, because if it hits him, it was an anti-air, right. it was invincible, okay. and then you could jump up and combo Chaos Dimension. Okay. That's all I was trying to do to him, but it's Spider-Man, who has really good mobility, yeah. so he, he beat me. I wasn't playing super serious. I didn't think he was going to leave after one game, and then he did. Dude, you're so heated. This was 20... Two years ago? I'm not ago. mad about it. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I'm not mad about it, honestly. Uh-huh. It's, it's, I think it's Come funny. It's, it's going to be okay, man. Dude, it's this, gonna be like okay. I said, this is the way I talk about things. Oh, man. <laughs> and now you're mad about me calling you that. <laughs> No, we need to get Spider Dan in the chat, dude. Dude, this actually happens a lot. Like even at my job, like I would talk about things. I'd yeah. be like, "Yeah, no, we have to do it this way." They're no, like, I, I, "They're I, like, I, I calm don't. down, James." I'm like, <laughs> "I'm not even mad," you know. And then there you <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm, and then I get mad, yeah. and yeah, and then yeah. it's over at that point in time. So yeah. <laughs> Oh guys, too funny. Hey, so you you mentioned that you were in Japan before Tragic the Gathering. Sure, was I mean, that, was that the uh, second time that you had been I there? I mean, I've been there like I would go there like on a yearly basis, you know, or maybe every ah, other year. And okay. uh, the first time was in '92 for a Champion Edition. That's the right. And I heard. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and then I mean, I would just go there like just random times, just sometimes not even playing games, just for anime. Oh and, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love anime. I've been watching anime since I was like five. No, years but old. yeah, I mean, that's quite a trip for just. I just love it there. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just I just really, really love yeah. it there. I had, like, a, a great time every time I went. And, you know, I was into, like, also, like, building, like, these garage kits, like, anime garage kits. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this stuff you could only get over there. This mm. is, like, before, you know, anime really took off in the United States. Anime Expo, I think, in 94 was, like, maybe, like, 8,000 people. Now it's, like, 110,000. You know, it's insane. Yeah. I forgot. You were also one of the guys who went to Japan. And got really good at virtual lawn, right? No, I didn't really play virtual. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that was somebody else. But because um, a lot of people, like at one point in time, that became the hot game. It became Everyone pretty good. Cool. Playing virtual lawn, yeah. Like George and him and all those guys. Was that a mid nineties game? I have no idea when that game came. It out. was around the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. Virtual Lawn got really, and everyone was like, yo, it's like fighting games, except it's mechs. Like, there's all this technique and everything. Cool the thing that I love about Sega is they always put a lot of, like, depth and strategy in, yeah. like, every game. Every mm-hmm. game they made. It's not like, I mean, there was, like, a surface level of play, but then also, like, a super deep, mm-hmm. like, meta mm-hmm. meta game that, like, the, the pros can enjoy. And that's that's one of, that's the main appeal of Virtual <laughs> Fighter. A lot of people just don't want to do that work, though. And I get it, you know, because, I mean, yeah. people, like, I mean, Street Fighter is the first thing out. People want to just do the motions they're familiar with. You know, and then when, you know, they play a game and it doesn't move that way or doesn't yeah. control that way, people are like, oh, screw this. I can't do what I want, so I'm just not going right. to do it, you know? Oh, yeah. Dude, Sega's but, um, still responsible for the best F-Zero game out there, too. Jesus. And they made F-Zero GX, and that oh, okay. game's so good. Yeah. It's, so, I mean, go yeah. ahead. No, no I, just, I just wanted to know more about you going to play in Japan, I guess. I mean... Can uh, I ask you a personal question? Sure. Which year did you meet Chizuru in Japan? Uh, that was 2001. 2001. Oh, yeah. okay. So I've been going, uh, you know, I knew like a little bit of Japanese here and there, but like I didn't really, um, after TTG, I actually, that was almost like a catalyst for me. And I don't know if people know, it's it's because of Ben, is I got out of games. I went cold turkey on games. I stopped playing games for about 10 years, you know, for the most part. I didn't know that. Yeah. And it's because, like, I mean, you know, to myself, I was thinking, and it's like, I'd, I'd, like, trained, like, VF for, like, months before. And I trained to get really, really good. And I was good. I was really good at that point. Uh, but then, 
you know, it's like, why am I going to train, you know, this hard and play this much just to be, you know, like disrespected by somebody in the end, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, you know, and just something clicked and I didn't want to play games anymore. And instead, I started focusing on design and then yeah, the learning. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Well, even before visual effects, it was just like, you know, like hardcore into design. And then in uh, 99, I decided I really wanted to learn Japanese. So I had a shoulder dislocation from like, you know, b-boying and stuff like that. Oh, dude. And um, I was just like, well, I can't do anything, so I'm just going to learn Japanese. So honestly, wow. like the greatest thing that came from Street Fighter and fighting games is the thought process of yeah. like playing somebody and not being able to beat them, but doing everything it takes to like train yourself. Because there's yeah. no school. You know, everybody, everybody like, you know, the, the most standard way in school is like, you know, you learn this, this, and this from a textbook. You do this, this, and this tutorial. There's no tutorial on, like, how to beat Daigo or how to beat sure. this person or how to beat that person. You know, it's all about what you do on your own to, like, figure out how to, like, you know, fish for yourself. Yeah. And that is the most valuable lesson I learned from Street Fighter. And I, I took that you. and I applied it towards other parts, you know, that mm -hmm. weren't games. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I want to get good at design. So I just said, oh, I'm just going to apply the same methodology. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find, like, all, like, the best guys and learn from them and just, you know, like, try to, like, you know, do what they do and so I could understand it. And then apply it to myself. And then same with Japanese. Yeah. Started learning Japanese like hardcore ninety nine. And I found a rival, somebody that was like a year better than me. And we there was like this like language school. There was a language school that we go to like for like a free chat on Friday nights. Okay, yeah, yeah. And right. uh, you know, I was pretty good at that point. I was I wasn't fluent, but I mean I was like probably lower intermediate level. Uh -huh. And then like I was the best guy there. I showed up, I'm like, oh dude, this like and there were like tons of girls, you know. Mm -hmm. and before I met Cheese it is at all. Right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but anyways, you know, I get there, I'm like, holy smokes, dude, look at this place. And then uh, we walk into this other room, and there's like this crowd of like 20 girls, you know, like around this dude. <laughs> uh, and then like, like oh, he's so cute and this and that, and he's so good. And like, yeah. that was Adam, you know. Okay. That was okay. who became my rival <laughs> later on. Wait, which Adam is this? You don't know him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. But, um, you know, he's actually the one, because I saw this guy, and he would always get like, you know, the limelight. Because like he was a year mm, ahead, and then we'd go okay. out in like a group. Right. And then, uh -huh. like, you know, they'd be like, oh, your, your Japanese is pretty good. But Adam, oh, my God. <laughs> I got so sick of hearing that. I just wanted oh, to kick his ass. <laughs> so this is where Street Fighter came yeah, into, like, you yeah, know, like yeah, other yeah. aspects uh -huh, uh -huh. of life. And I just, I wanted to kill this guy. I wanted to be better than him. I wanted to, like, put him to shame. And he saw me studying and, like, catching up. I had, like, you know, thousands of note cards, dude. Okay. I mean, literally, at my best, I had, like, probably, like, 4,000 note cards, flashcards. Okay. Yeah. okay. I got real, and he saw this, so he's like, oh, man, I, got, I can't yeah, fall behind, you know. Up. Yeah. Dang, but, this really is an anime, yeah. dude. This is 100% an someone in this chat. So chatting. we actually, like, really, like, you know, uh, just kind of, you know, sharp, iron sharpens iron. And then mm -hmm. we both got pretty good at Japanese. We both got fluent, and we both moved to Japan around the same time. Okay. Yeah. He's still, you know, a Facebook friend. I mean, he lives... Yeah, like, I was about uh, to say, when, he yeah. was, when you were both in Japan, you probably guys became good friends at some yeah, point. Yeah, huh? absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, even throughout the process before we moved over there, we became friends through the competition mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, nobody sure. was as hardcore as, like, we were, sure. you know? Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works, dude. But it was, uh, it was really awesome. I mean, he was, uh, I'm glad that happened. But again, this is, like, that whole, like, competitive nature all came from Street Fighter. And if there's anything I could share with anybody is, like, really learning... Uh, to not just, you know, like the player matchups or what this game can do, but, you know, just the overall, like, lesson you get from that and applying it to different parts of your life. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. everything I've become successful in or still trying to become successful in is because of Street Fighter. Dude, I've told everybody that the hardest thing about fighting games is it's really, you have to learn how to look at yourself internally. Yeah. And you have to understand that if you're losing, it's your fault. Yeah. Because the best thing about fighting games ever, someone said it to me perfectly, was just like, the Ryu you're playing is not any different than the Ryu that Daigo's playing. Right. It's the exact same Ryu. So if he's winning and you're not, you're the problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, so, that's that's right exactly how right. it is. And so fighting games, like I said, I mean, the fact that it helped me with my temper and a lot of things, you know, it, it, it helped me problem solve and a lot of that things too. Sense. I just need to see if it can get me to motivate me more. Because, I mean, on, honestly, like... Fighting games made me start ditching classes in college and stuff too, so it might have demotivated me. But anyway, no, I think it's got some benefits, and, and I, I found the same thing. I mean, I I thought I've always thought that uh, fighting games and understanding the critical thinking that comes with it mm -hmm. is a, is has had a big impact on me. I think Absolutely. I think that's I think that's, the, I think that's the thing that has had the biggest impact on me. It's probably not like what it took to get good for me. Like it's probably not. I don't think that that's had a big impact, but. 
understanding how to think critically better is definitely very closely linked to getting mm -hmm. better at fighting games for me. And that's applied to getting better at the law and whatever else I'm doing. Absolutely. And then when I went to law school and I had to learn how to think critically in a new way and in a different way and in a better way, that made me a better fighting game player too. Of course. So when I started, the, I only started winning tournaments when I was in law school in Washington, D.C. Um, mm. And I really think that that was because like, I was learning how to think better critically in school, in law school. And I was applying that to fighting games. But it was a feedback loop, for sure. Of both, course. Both, I mean, both were feeding into each other. I think there are some people, and not everybody, but some people that actually miss the lesson that you know games are teaching. It's not yeah. like you know mm -hmm. this specific matchup, they're thinking too meta. But you know there's a way to like you know take that knowledge and apply it to any part of your life and be successful at it. Obviously, the main key is you have to want it. You have to want yeah, to get good at these other things. But like you know, for me, with like Japanese or design or whatever it is, or for anybody else... You know, you can take that knowledge and like, you know, how you dissect a player mm -hmm. or how you approach learning a new game. You know, like, what do you do when you play a new game? You know, you like see what every button does, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you what, see what part, cancels yeah, exactly. and what, you yeah. know? Yeah. And you start learning the combos, you know? And exactly. then it's like, okay, here's like, I have one solid combo. You know, I've got some basics mm -hmm. of like, here's my anti-air, you know, here... Here's my shoryuken type move or whatever. One of my favorite things that David told me a long time ago was that he said he enjoys writing contracts and reading contracts because he says it feels like he's playing footsies. Because it's just like it's yeah, like I totally, to I can totally, opening, yeah. you know, I can totally you, you just got to make sure that you make sure you cover all the bases and stuff like that. And I was just it's like, like fighting games. I was just like, it's, it's totally so like interesting. I never because for me it's like oh I gotta read this dumb contract again. And then when you said it like that, I was just like whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> that's that's actually yeah. really cool. I mean, in like you know the the work that I do now with like the food trucks, when we first started learning, I just started noticing a lot of the similarities between gaming. Number one, like uh, when we build some of these items, you know, there's like a deli station. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at setting that up the same way you'd like set up your hotkeys, like, you know, for gaming. Right. And it's exactly mm -hmm. the same way because you have a perfect config, you can move a lot faster. You know, that makes or, sense. or something like reading the tickets on the board, that's like Tetris. You know, you play that the same way you play Tetris. That makes and sense. Any, this is why we particularly try to hire good gamers, you know. That's sick, dude. Because, I'm serious. No, I'm I believe joking. it. I'm not, I'm not joking. We had people that were so good at reading those tickets. Let's say you've got like eight tickets and you got like one item that's on like, yeah. you know, like four or five of them you're not going to build one ticket at a time you're going to build eight of those and then have that item done for all those tickets so right. <laughs> it's like in tetris when you have like that long piece yeah. and you just build you're everything just else and you drop it, it. Yep. Totally it's exactly sense. the same thing I, I don't mean to blow up the dmv scene that is to say the dc maryland virginia, virginia scene they were better than i was in third strike and in cvs too but none of those dudes beat me in st so where's the tragic okay. the gathering all right come here here, so. here we go uh let's see well, don't worry guys i'll get the camera in a second. So this is actually, just so you know, that oh, Darkstalkers uh, on, launch on. party is the only photo I have from it. This okay, is in... Hang on a second. Hang on. Before you do that, let me turn this on so people can see. Okay. So this is a photo from the Darkstalkers or Vampire uh, launch party when that game came out. Dang. The original... Yeah, that's yeah. the original Darkstalkers. Yeah. Can you okay. can angle this, it a little? Uh, like this? Yeah, just like put it on top there. Because when I was trying to do that, well, one, I can't reach it, and two, it was getting glare. Oh, it's, it's a little bit further this way. Yeah, it's glare as well. So okay, okay, go. okay. Yeah, there you go. So let me move forward. Here are a couple others, you know, from that same uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. same event. Dang, check yeah. that out. And that's before the game even launched, you know, long ass time ago. This is so cool. <laughs> Photo album, is this like Imgur? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Physical Imgur, can you do? Oh, Just so, so you guys funny. know, like your grandparents might have something like this. It's called a photo album. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I've, I've been trying to get my parents to digitize our photo album. Oh, yeah. So this is, this is other, this, this is some other stuff. This is my right, friend right. Ed. Yeah, this, this uh, camera tech yeah. is, is almost as uh, janky as these pictures. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? Uh, going old school either way. So for, uh, if you're going to see Alita, you know, this is uh, oh, the character. Oh, dang. Um, what is this? I, I didn't yeah. even realize Alita was that uh, yeah. was that classic of an anime. 90... Battle Angel Alita that's coming out that Robert Rodriguez is... You, okay, 93. Mind, yeah. yeah, we're not getting paid any money to do this pitch either. So yeah. you know, if you see it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, let oh, me go damn, back wait, here real quick. Here. Yeah, so there's uh, DJ and Fei Long. Oh, dang. What the yeah. hell? These figures yeah, are that awesome. awesome. Yeah. Damn, I wish I could find a way to get a hold of some of these. So I had the, the DJ one's super I had the cool. DJ and Fei Long and Look at that DJ gave, right there. That's so, yeah, that's so pretty sick. sick. These are the first uh, Street Fighter um, like uh, resin kits that they made. Wow. Yeah. That's I gave this so to a friend cool. and I gave this to another friend. Dang, but uh, yeah, they're they're cool. awesome. Yeah. You didn't give it to the friend. <laughs> 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 so uh, and 
probably backtrack a little bit. Sure. This is a picture of Tachikawa, who before Daigo was known as the best player in Japan for uh, Dash or Champion Edition. Yeah, and keep in mind, this is a different Tachikawa, obviously. There's yeah. a current Tachikawa who's really him. good at Dragon Ball and yeah. stuff like that. Different Tachikawa. Yeah. So. It's, a common, it's a common Japanese yeah. name. Yeah. So this is, is me you when right I was, there? you know, you... like young. I was young too one day. You guys. look so 90s in this picture. Oh my God. Yeah, it Wait, was can, a 90s. Can, can, you, can you try to get a close-up of him right there? I'm trying, I'm trying to, but it's, it's the reflection that's, yeah. that's messing it up. You could, maybe yeah. I could pull this out here. Are you sure? Oh, okay, there you go. Does that help? A little bit. Come on. Yeah. Come on, focus. Come on, focus. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, uh, autofocus, please. Yeah, dude, seriously, some Rick oh, ass Oh, bummer. Here. I mean, this is, this is probably going to be the so, best I can get there. Oh. oh, get out of here, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the wheat lad for sewing, but there we go. So The guy on the bottom, again, Tachikawa. Right. Uh, this like air, this uh, background you're looking at, this is Game Fan Japan. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Dang. That was the branch office we had in Ogikubo. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. I okay. thought this was like an apartment, but wow. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, yeah. Probably was kind of an apartment, right? So look at this. Look at these pictures of Tokyo or just Japan in general. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. We'll get to the here, TTG let's stuff. This, let's pull yeah, this back yeah. Sure, sure. Just so you can get okay. to another page here. <sighs> All right, let's start with Cole. Jason Cole. Jason Cole. Uh, Jason freaking Cole. Here what, we go. What year are we talking about? This is right 97. Here? This is uh, 1997, Tragic the Gathering. Jeez, he's, he's already a grown-ass adult, by Jason the way. Jason Cole is one of the only people in the fighting game community that's like legit, like still in it, that's older than I am. Yeah. You know? This is uh, Ben's little brother. I forgot his name. Oh, But uh, Tragic's oh, little brother. I guess I can see some resemblance there. Uh, Jason Cole later won Evo a couple of times. And Super Turbo, yeah. He's always been a really, really strong player. Yeah. It's like him, Graham Wolf. I think Tom and Tony are older than I am. Mm. And so there's there's not very many people who are older than I am in this community <laughs> still. At this this, dude's, this dude's struggling. Yeah. Here is uh, Toby. Do you know Toby? He's a hardcore Tekken player. He's really great at Warcraft as well. Ooh. So, Ooh, yeah. He but was, yeah, uh, I mean, like, this is a great example here. I mean, just imagine like... 30 people in a house yeah. sleeping all over the floor. I mean, he was basically made the craziest video game slumber party. This is this is a Tragic the Gathering. This, this is, is Tragic's tragic house, yeah. yes. This is literally Tragic the Gathering. Everybody's Yeah, this is like a natural everywhere. disaster, like overflow center or something. That's what it yeah. looks like. Uh, I mean, look at this, look at this yeah, over here. Yeah, look at that, dude. Someone on a couch. Some lucky fella got the couch. Yeah. yeah, I know. Well, that couch, if you can look at it, is barely supporting any weight at this point in time. It's like a... <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that couch. But yeah, look, the moss stick on the floor. Look at the moss oh, stick. Oh, is it a moss? Oh, yeah, it is a moss. moss stick. This yeah. is in 97 they were already yeah. being made? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah moss stick. Yeah, he was were... making them, like, I think in 93 or 94. No, yeah. wow. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, it was the only way to get those things at home. I, I never know. had a moss stick. I've never had one. I had one, but it wasn't until probably 03 or 04. I didn't realize yeah. it was so old. And so here we go. More Jason Cole. Alex under the covers. Is that Alex? Oh Thanks god, it is me. Alex. Oh my god. I wish I could zoom in closer on this so people could see, but it's Do like you have like a, a auto, manual? Yeah, let me see if there's an autofocus control on this thing. Let me see. Uh Logitech. Yeah, uh, you could you could uncover the plastic. That may that may help. But it didn't really yeah, help super much last yeah, time. Yeah, we tried last time, but it didn't really help. Focus is just really bad here. I can... Yeah, I wonder if it's the same mass stick that John Choi still has today. <laughs> it, well, that stick that John Choi had has been retrofitted with like modern, like newer buttons and stuff like that. that. Makes but sense. it's still not a square gate. But the shell is the way. same, probably. The box. Uh, yeah, is the, the same. box might be the same. I know Wizards has been the same for a long time too. So uh, let me see if I can figure this out here. Uh, If you want to go ahead and move this sure, around yeah. while I see if I can try to figure this out here, if I can. Oh yeah, my Evil god! Masters. It's one of the cannons! Dang. And I'm so terrible at telling the difference between like the cannons, so don't ask me which one that is. So. Uh, what do you got here? Zoom? It's just zoom. There's there's just a zoom. There's no there's no focus on well, there. Well, maybe try to. Just go here and zoom on. Yeah, that. just try yeah. to zoom it. That's looking pretty decent. Oh, that actually looks fine. Yeah, just, yeah. just roll it up there. I have to. Oh, hit you this have button? to press press. Oh, oh that's God, weird. That's crazy. Yeah, 
Uh, so that's anyway, there you go. That's by sleeping under the covers over there. So, so crazy. Let's see, there's the head of somebody else sleeping over there. And oh yeah, on the bottom right. Yeah, the people everywhere. Jesus. Do, do you did you guys follow up with most of the people who went to this place? Like, or did many of them fall out of the scene? Some people, I mean, I know Castell was there, you know, Castell. Oh, still, yeah, of yeah. course, he's the guy who created Tekken Zaibatsu. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, uh-huh, Castell, he's super, he was like one of the most important people in the in the Tekken community. Absolutely. Yeah. So here's uh, Alex all vatoed out. Oh, oh yeah. Look at this kid. Dude, but it's the same expression. It's the yeah. same expression. It's the same, it's damn, wild. but I mean, this is why he had the, I mean, obviously it's not PC to say anymore, yeah. but it's why he got famous for wearing the wife beaters all the time, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, here's, here's another, the one below is another great one oh, as yeah, well. Look, you know? at this. God, look at this kid. This is the, the Tekken champion at the time, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh my God. Jesus, this is so crazy. Alex Valle, oh yeah. <laughs> so we got Ben Curtin here, tragic. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay. tragic himself. Yeah. There you go. He's cleaning the floor. So oh wow. Somebody must have dropped something. I Probably had to risky happened. business his way, you know, after yeah. the parents started coming home and stuff. I almost feel like that's Wizard behind him, but I can't. Yeah, tell. I think it might be. Yeah. Oh, I can only see his arm. And uh, here we go. There's one of the cannons again. So this is Marty. Uh, he played. He was a Tekken player. Um, so Omar Deloney on the couch. Yeah. Uh, this is Kevin. I can't remember his last name. He was a VF player. Um, it's Tony. I'm pretty sure it's Tony, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, and that's, then that's Black Gerald, right? Black Gerald, yeah. Yeah. There's a Black Gerald and a White Gerald. I'm obviously the White Gerald. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because every time we talked about Gerald, we had to be like, oh, White Gerald, Black yeah. Gerald. Yeah. So, yeah I mean, basically, at first, you know, I think the first day they'd say Gerald, and both of us like turn around. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then quickly figured out that wasn't a legit. <laughs> I like how somebody is pointing out the fact that they're 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 they're, they're what facing the wires in the picture. <laughs> That's right. We oh, didn't what? have wires because oh, we don't yeah. have. There's with the controllers were all wired back oh, in the wow. day. Oh wow! What a weird thing to even think of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of oh, course. So another wires. one of uh, <laughs> Tony and Alex. Tony and Alex. Is that is that Ingram? No. Uh, I almost. I thought that might. Who in the back? I can't. I can't see the back. Can you? Yeah. Oh, in the chair on the left. Yeah. I. I, I don't think it's him though. I don't think it's him. I don't want to do the all white guys look the same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Man. Yeah. It's all right, dude. Oh, the There's uh, Toby again. Again, oh, Toby was a pretty done. solid uh, Tekken player back in the day. I'm surprised he could fall asleep. Toby Angelis. Next... That's uh, that's his last name. Uh, falling asleep next to all these like stinky shoes and socks. Yeah, that's impressive like down that. there. Well, I mean, when you've been up for 40 hours, you know. Yeah, I know, know. right? <laughs> oh man, he's just cracking out on games. Dude, look at all these guys. Do you? This is like FGC Body. There's a Facebook group called yeah. FGC Body that people really? post up pictures of people asleep. This is like FGC bodied from like nine. Dude, I I should digitize these and like give them to them. That'd be really great, actually, yeah, if you could digitize these. Really funny. That's I just uh, don't have a good digitizer, yeah. so. So they have Bob Painter down there, who was like a pretty oh, strong yeah. uh, San Francisco. He's still a representative for like. Dude, he, a ST, he just yeah. played at Super Turbo. Uh, he yeah. played at SCR just this past year for the Super Turbo awesome. tournament. Yeah, he was in top eight. Is he he's from always North keeping Cal? up the scene. Yeah. No, no, oh, he's from San Diego. Diego. San Diego. Yeah, he's oh, okay. San Diego. It was him, and then uh, James Romady. James Romady. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. And also Way Sit. I don't know if you remember Way. Oh, I the name sounds familiar. Pretty solid hyper fighting Blanca. Who is this? This is Ben. Ben Sharp again. Yeah, tragic the host. Yeah. Can we had like this stack of pizzas. Might have been like forty or fifty pizzas, you know, just to feed everybody. Wow, that was a yeah. crazy order. Probably yeah. back in the day when a pizza was like three dollars. Yeah, too, something you know, like that. So, you know. you know, something like that. So probably we're taking advantage of the Little Caesars pizza, pizza or something like that. Oh there's yeah, another. This is probably the best one of Alex. You know, well, look oh at. Oh god. my god, look at this guy. <laughs> How old do you think he was in this picture? If it was ninety six. What, what, what year was this again? Uh, he was like in his teens. He was in his. What teens, year is this again? Uh, 97. 97. So he's like two or three years younger than me. Okay. So in 97, I was 21. So he was about 18 at this time. Yeah, yeah he was about 18 at this time. So there you go. Hanging Eight. out by the trash. Yeah, pretty much, dude. Is that what is it? What is that to his bottom right there? Is that a six pack? No, surely not. Oh, the Corona, the corona down there? Yeah. yeah the oh, my God. Were you guys. You, no, I'm like, sure you I, were not breaking the law and drinking underage. Oh, no, definitely so, not. Yeah, Obviously we not. We don't do no anything way. illegal yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, like, I just like...
from these pictures, one of the greatest things about these pictures of Vi, though, is it really gives you a proper understanding of just how cocky this guy was. <laughs> like, this guy, he was indestructible. Like, he didn't think yeah. anybody could beat him in anything. And he had ab- So a He's lot of people right don't realize him, yeah. that he was Justin Wong before Justin Wong. You know, we talk about greatest players of all time yeah. and Vi is very rarely in that conversation it's kind of unfortunate because right. he was an MVC2 champion he was the Tekken national champion he was the best at street he is literally Justin before Justin yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize just how good he was mm-hmm. at fighting games back like then like being like a like a multi-game like you know top level champion like you know street fighter like Alpha 2 and then also Tekken I mean that was like unheard of I mean he yeah, was the first person right? to do that well, who's this in the car? I think that's Toby again. Oh, it's Toby. Yeah, okay. We we're just on the way to... I remember uh, Toby. Yeah. I remember Toby. I saw the... It was solid, dude. So yeah. we got Tom and Tony. I'm pretty sure this is Castell. I remember that. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh-huh. Here's Ben on the Tragic, ground. Yeah. Did you, did you, this you is, remember uh, his shirt? Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that's Joanna, right, down there? Yeah, or? that's Joanna. This is this is actually Marty. Oh, okay. This oh, Joanna's like, over here, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, that's Ben and then Toby again. Yeah, there's Joanna over yeah. there. Yeah, there's Joanna, Bob she Painter. Was, she was known because she was actually good at, she was pretty decent at Virtual Fighter. Like, it, yeah. was, it was pretty crazy. She could do stun palms and everybody was like, oh my God, she could do stun palms in VF3. It's crazy. So, yeah. Her and then um, uh, Ginny, uh, Psylocke. She went by Psylocke. Oh, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. Her uh, and uh, Ben were going out at the time. Uh, and uh, one thing I will say about uh, her, too, is that she was the one that got Justin into Nexon and got me into Nexon. Oh, so she wow. was the one who actually got us into Nexon uh, at one point in time. Ancient so, yeah. connections. Yeah, she's been around for a while. So so is uh, Omar Deloney here on the couch. Yeah. Uh, and then Marty again, looking like he hasn't slept in a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Painter, I'm not sure. Do you remember? I, I'm, I'm not sure who this is. That I don't remember who that yeah. is. Oh yeah, that is Bob right there, yeah. dude. Bob, freaking Bob Painter, dude. I appreciate the Blade Runner reference. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, that's good line. There's Tony and Tom again. Yeah. Tony, Tom, right over oh, no, it's here. Two, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Who's this over here? Uh, I think that's uh, Ben's little brother. Oh with, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exposure okay, bono. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, we didn't have digital cameras that could do all this calculation back in the days, okay? So you this is to take uh, a picture and hope it turned out. You didn't know. Yeah. This is Gunther. Um, oh, he actually, David Dial, right? Yeah, David yeah. Dial. Yeah. David Dial, he's in Japan right now. Yeah. He's been in Japan forever. Yeah, he's one of the guys who, um, man, I, I've got so many. I can talk about his lot stories, but he was the guy obsessed with Infinites in uh, X-Men vs. Street Fighter. He also did a bunch of A combo videos, and then... Uh, uh, the year of the Daigo Perry, it's thanks to him and Madge that I even was able to witness the Daigo Perry because I almost didn't go on Sunday. Mm. But a wizard, I, something had happened and wizard sent Madge and David to come and kidnap me from my home. <laughs> and they took me basically out there. Oh, and, uh, and then I got to see the Daigo Perry and the debut of the two hit combo video that was there course, at the same yeah. time. By so, you. Yeah. Oh, and, and that was, so now we have oh Jesus Christ! What do you yeah. got? We have we have James Chen. Oh, where's oh James? Yep. Yeah, so that's me right there. That's young James Chen right young there. Young James. And uh, this is my friend Kevin. This is yep. uh, Kevin Bruner. He was one of the best MK2 players in Southern California for the longest of time. He also played a lot of hyper fighting too. I think at one. Yeah. Point. Oh yeah, yeah. He's super good. So him, it's interesting because uh, I met him at UCLA because him and Eric Tetley turned out yeah. to be best friends. And so I knew Tetley, and then when I found out they all knew each other, so me and Kevin became friends. This is Calvin right here. He's another one of my best friends. We used to all play, so he was my roommate one time. So during the CVS2, CVS1 days, I would play my brother right here, Calvin, me. The three of us just played CVS1 and CVS2 all day, and I just random selected. That's why I was so good wow. at that game, because I got good at all the characters, because I just random selected all day. So it's like Marcus Arrow back there on the couch. Yeah, Flip Main over there. But yeah, these are the four guys that I drove up here with. So How come you're not doing a fish mouth in that picture? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, because it doesn't look... It looks like I'm playing something on the Nintendo 64. I can't remember what you were playing. What the... Oh, was it GoldenEye? Yeah, it was GoldenEye. Hands. Oh, yeah, No, yeah. it couldn't have been GoldenEye. I've never played Goldeneye before. I've never played Goldeneye. You've never played Goldeneye. I've never still? played Goldeneye. Yeah, I've actually never uh, I played. I don't even Goldeneye. know what to say. It could have been Mario Kart or I think something it might like that. Yeah, uh-huh. I Mario. know. I, hmm, hmm, I don't remember. Yeah. So the next one down is uh, Gunther again. Yeah. David Dial and then Alex. 
Look at that. Like, so and this is my a friend, my friend Calvin one. again. Yep. Yeah, uh, but yeah, and then uh, Toby. What is so. it? What are they playing cards here, dude? And yeah. look, there's a Jenga board back there too. I'm telling you, we were just playing whatever. It was just the biggest slumber party yeah. for for video just game like nerds. A whole, yeah, I was gonna say a whole bunch of nerds hang out for a weekend. Yeah, uh, basically. So. <laughs> That's great. There you go. Oh God, uh, you you can't find a picture of Alex where it doesn't look like he thinks he's the best human <laughs> on the planet. Even today, he's got a Pretty he's good. got a like camera face. He's yeah, got a picture uh, face. Uh -huh, like, he's yeah, always yeah, had a picture uh -huh. face. And there's my brother again. My brother standing next to Tony Cannon right there. So this is my brother right here. So shout outs to him. There's Kevin, my friend. Ah, uh, pouring in Bob just Hayden. Coke, probably nothing else. Actually, for my brother, it 100% oh, was, it was just okay. Coke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, <laughs> okay. definitely. There's a lot of uh, rated G stuff uh, going on here, too. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. I don't think that many people are drinking, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. You know, you drink, you can't really play games too well. So It's true. Yeah. There you go. And uh, down here, I don't know who all these. Are. I can't remember. Uh, she was uh, he was friends with um, Jeannie and uh, Yoon. Oh, okay, okay. I can't remember his name. Okay. And then these are basically the kind of same picture up here. Yeah, it's like the same picture. Okay. Oh, it is the same picture. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, this is definitely my friend Kevin because it's yeah, got the, the nine, nine inch, inch nail shirt. Yeah. As soon as you see nine inch nails, you know it's him. So yeah. he was the biggest nine inch nail. All right, nail let's that I cover up this stuff. I don't want to. Dang, we got okay. some secret pictures in here. Secret. Oh, dang. Okay, 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 okay. So that was the last of it with some of the leftover pizza. This, so this is Jeannie, uh, Psylocke. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I don't remember her. Yeah, she's really cool. She played uh, some Tekken and some Virtua Fighter. She's okay. really nice. Oh, that's James Romney right there, yep, right? Yep. That's James Romney, that's the right. other SoCal guy, Dalsam player. Yep. He was the one that I... I I told the story of how I wanted to ban X Dalsam from Alpha 3 because I thought he was too broken. And it was because James Romney was really good at Dalsam, and I didn't know Schaefer was a Dalsam player the whole entire time, right? Because he was using Rolento in Alpha mm -hmm. 2. And so uh, Schaefer beat Romney Dalsam Dalsam. Yeah. And I was like, freaking Schaefer just picked up Dalsam and was able to beat like one of the best Dalsam characters. Broken, ban this character. Yeah. And I was like, really stupid back yeah, then. Yeah, so. well, Jane, I mean, uh, Jeff, that was actually the first character we saw him play back in Champion Edition. Right. He was like one of the strongest Dalsams, if not the strongest right. Dalsam in mm -hmm. SoCal. Exactly. Yeah, so. South Park is really old, folks. It, <laughs> was, it was already popular. Right. Oh, that's right. Like, that's it was already Park. popular in this year. Dang, it, and it even... had been popular. It wasn't like a new that's show. That's crazy. I didn't even think about that. You're right. South it's a couple Park years old at this point. Wow. Sure. Jesus. Uh, okay. I think that's all for uh, photo time from what I brought. I mean, okay, okay. I have a lot of other stuff. Um, well, some other stuff that's not really... Uh, oh, here's some old, old pictures. This is from an arcade in Kanazawa in 91. Oh, Actually, cool. 93. Oh, dang. This is a Japanese yeah. arcade then? Yeah, it's a Japanese arcade in 93. Oh, dang. Is that you too? Yeah, it's me. Dang. Oh, look, look at this Look at that kid. jacket. Look at that jacket. Is that, yeah. that yeah. is an 80s jacket. This little guy. Yeah. <laughs> that is it's a, like, like you were still, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. 80s, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm surprised it isn't pink and black, yeah. you know? So this is an arcade in Kanazawa in uh, 93. Where is Kanazawa? Kanazawa is like, you know, it's central Japan, but like, you know, Tokyo is right here. Here's like, um, and then Kanazawa is like right there, like diagonally, you know, not, not towards Osaka and not okay. towards Hokkaido, okay. but if you went diagonally across, you know, towards like the ocean on the other side, okay. Kanazawa is right there. And it's a, it's a little smaller town? It's a, yeah, it's a small city. You know, it's, it's a, I mean, you know, like we say smaller <laughs> town just because it's not as huge as Tokyo or Osaka, but you know, it's a pretty Hey, you know what? I mean, just saying high school delinquent is not wrong, yeah. right? Because you said you got expelled. So, so. here, uh, yeah, here's if you want to see some, this is basically what old school like Japanese arcade looks like. Yeah. It's funny. I feel like it looks very similar to how they look today. Yeah. Or at least when, the ones I saw in Tokyo, at least. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. So okay. I don't know okay, if you've show, seen this. Just show the ones that have all the cabs yeah, in the background. Yeah, yeah, like there's there just go. a million cabs back there. Yep. Again, dude, you, I mean, I know you don't watch series, but, like, you would get a kick out of high school. But it you seems, probably it wouldn't, sounds like it, yeah. You probably wouldn't care about, the obviously, the, the, the love triangle stuff that happens in there, but, like, just as a gamer and okay. fighting gamers, it's just, it's so ridiculously accurate. Because, like, if people don't know, Akira's knee in Virtua Fighter 2 was one of, like, the hardest yeah, moves to do. This all the cabs are here. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so this is my friend. She actually gave me free credits back then. In, oh, that's uh, funny. Okay. The Neo Geo. This is a Neo Geo arcade. Oh, it only had Neo Geo okay. titles. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, like Akira's knee is like a one frame move in, in Virtual Fighter 2 because if Akira had a knee, it would be too powerful, right? 
And so it's really, really hard to do. That was one of the things like stun palm that everybody would practice trying to do. And even in high school girl, like the high school girl, the girl comes up and the guy's like, oh my God, he, she can do Akira's knee. And they actually show her like plinking the buttons and stuff like that on the thing. It's just like the, the amount of accuracy in that thing is actually really damn cool, funny. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, that was really great. Thanks for the photos, man. Yeah. No awesome. problem, no problem. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, uh, again, cool? I've got some other stuff that, you know, I'll just give to you guys. You could just do whatever you want with it, just mm -hmm. digitize it. That would be But awesome. there are old school pictures of, like, family fun around, like, 91, 92. I should talk to Segley so about great, this dude. because yeah. not only would these, it would be great to digitize these photos, but I still have a shoebox downstairs of all those old Evo tapes. Like I have, like I have the Daigo Perry on on mini DV in my closet, right? I have the original copy of all these things. It's the original copy. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> the original copy. The original. Oh copy. my It's God. the one that Seth recorded, and yeah. I have it, right? So I have like a bunch of tapes, and Segley has actually told me, uh, he was like, he's like, dude, just one of these days. I need to bring it to a studio and let's just digitize Dude, everything. The first time you guys had that conversation, the first time I was around for that conversation yeah, yeah, was uh, at least five years ago. Yeah, right, exactly. At least. But I mean, like, because that was the thing is like when Eva was around, uh, starting in 2002, the first time I was at UCLA, I took it upon myself to buy a digital camera specifically yeah. for that event and I started taking pictures. And then I was like, we need to document this further. I bought a video camera and just started filming to use for trailers and stuff like that. So a lot of that video footage, it, from the old days is thanks to me because I just had all that footage and I and I use them for a lot of the intros. So a lot of times when you yeah. watch those old intro videos that I made uh, that are on my old YouTube channel, yeah. but like uh, that's all my own footage. Like I literally recorded that and that's where I got the Steve Harrison jumping on the table and popping off footage with my with the tape running out. It was like 30 seconds left and I was like, please win, Steve, please win because I want to see what happens and he won Ooh, and he man. popped off and then he ran out the door. That was the, the only door. time Steve ever beat the clock, let me yeah. tell you. <laughs> Damn. So this is what I have um, somewhere. I just need, I know where they are. I just need to like bump it down. Mm -hmm. So uh, 94, uh, mm. Super Turbo Tournament, UCLA. Vi is here. Uh, what's Vi is here. You missed all of your old school photos, oh, dude. You gotta, you gotta bring them back up. I gotta now. bring the old school oh, photos geez, back. Oh, story time, dude. <laughs> okay, 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 here, here. You, yeah, you flip yeah, through because yeah, I don't want to like. Sure, no, that's okay, that's okay. Yeah. You, you missed all of your own your, your own photos here. Here, so, let's let's start with the good yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. Bye. <laughs> Check you out, dude. Yeah. This is a tragic gathering. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he remembers this. This is Gerald's. This yeah. is Gerald's photo mine, album. Man. Not mine, Justin. This is Gerald's here, dude. Look at that. Where's the where's the poker or the the card? The poker game? one. That one's up here. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, check him out. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Playing cards, there we go. Yeah. And his Peruvian brother, uh, Tony. Well, not real brother. But right. <laughs> that's it's another one. There. there were a couple other good There's ones. The yeah. there. There's another one with uh, yeah. with Tony. Oh, that's so funny. And there's one in, like, I think he's... Uh, there are a couple really good ones Oh, yeah, here. there we yeah. go. There we go. Uh, there we go. Damn, check him out. Check out Vi, dude. <laughs> it's too funny, dude. Oh my god, these are great. <laughs> There's a pose in <laughs> like, every picture. Vi yeah. is damn we old. Yeah, this is like, I mean, There's you know, a pose like. in every picture. It's yeah. I mean, I took a bunch of random photos. Like, Alex is the only one who actually knows how to, you know, pose for the camera. Right, <laughs> right yeah. yeah right? Uh, <laughs> nobody else actually posed for it, dude. He says he's wearing a beanie right now. That's <laughs> awesome, dude. It's too funny. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah I think those those are the best ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll look for some other stuff. I mean, again, but uh, as for uh, as for footage, I got this uh, Super Turbo tournament from UCLA, around like '94. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got that somewhere. I mean, I just it's on VHS. Was that the one that Bob Painter won? Or no, no I think no, Jeff okay, won. Okay. That one. okay, okay. Yeah, Jeff or either Watson. I think Watson might have won it. Yeah. There was you know like that uh, Chun Li player Matt. Oh God, Matt! Yeah, he annoyed the uh, heck uh -huh. out of uh, like Jeff, and Jeff oh, yeah, was just sitting yeah, yeah. there for ninety nine uh -huh. seconds. This guy would not land on a tiger shot, no matter Dude, what. Dude, Matt but. was so funny because he was the first person that I ever saw do instant air head stomp. Right, I right, think right. he yeah, invented Street Fighter too. Yeah, you know why? Because he didn't like to throw. Right, and yeah. that's what I was about to tell. Wow. So yeah. I was playing Champion Edition at UCLA because he went to UCLA as well yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, that was when Balrog was the shittiest beyond all shit because his dash punch couldn't hit yeah. anyone low and he didn't have a low dash punch yeah 
So, like, if you crouch block, you couldn't even chip anybody. Yeah. Like, you just blocked it. So, I was playing against him. I, well, no, I was using Balrog against the computer. He came and challenged me. And I'm like, I'm using freaking Balrog. Like, this character's awful. So, I'm like, dash punch. And he's just crouched there. Dude, all of a sudden, he's just crouching there. And I'm like, I can't do anything. I have to throw. And I threw him. And he was like, what? Are you going to throw? And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, that must have been champion be. edition. Yeah, it was champion yeah, edition. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah Matt, was a, Matt was a really solid player. Yeah, he was, he really was really another. Good. Dude, you don't even understand. I mean, the probably the number one reason why I ended up going to UCLA was because I knew they had a good Street Fighter scene. <laughs> I'm I'm not even joking. Like oh, that God. was the main reason why I wanted to this go there. This is why we're here today. Yeah, because like uh, like Dabney. So in Alpha One, uh, the very first time I saw a Raging Demon was because Dabney hit me with it, and I didn't even know it existed, and I was so mad when he hit me with uh, that thing. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, but like it was funny because he's the guy who actually taught me about footsies. Because I would use Ken in Alpha 2, and he would jump at me, and I wouldn't anti-air him. My problem still exists to this day, <laughs> right? And, but then I would be like, okay, I'm totally going to anti-air you the next time you jump. So jump, I'm going to anti-air him. And he would never jump. And I was like, what the hell? And I'm like, he's not jumping. And I'm like, damn it. So I go in at him, and then he jumped at me, and I did an uppercut because I started going in on the footsies. And he was the one who taught me that, like... He could tell that I was yeah. what I when I was doing it. <laughs> Dean was another guy. He was the best guy I'll play over there. He was the one that was legit the guy who told taught me how to play high level Street Fighter because it was the same thing that happened. He was doing something to me in Alpha Two and I couldn't beat it. As soon as I figured out how to beat it, he stopped doing it, and I got so mad. I remember walking because it took me about like 20, 25 minutes to walk home from campus. Right, okay. the entire time I'm like fuming like I can't even see like 10 feet in front of me because I'm so mad right and then like halfway walking home I was just like he knew exactly when I figured it out he could tell because the way my character probably started moving differently and I started doing different things I was like oh my god and Street Fighter opened up like it was the craziest thing it's it's a good thing that you had that moment of self-realization while you were thinking to yourself instead of looking down at your phone or listening to your Walkman (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I could have been playing Final Fantasy Record Keeper and never had that happen to me. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Oh, that's funny. But um, maybe, I mean, I just really need to, you know, figure out how I could get all this stuff together. Yeah. But there's that. There's the, the the footage of, like, Alex playing in the, that national tournament for yeah. a second. Uh-huh. I got that somewhere. I stood there and recorded most of it. That's you so know, cool. So, like, the, uh, like the, the was it, like, the Korean player? And I got some footage of him. So, yeah, so uh, Hayashida right, yeah. Dozono as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as, then I also have this uh, Southern Hills tournament, the very first Southern Hills Street Fighter Three tournament. Oh, yeah. that's the one that you talk about in yeah. the Game Fan yeah, magazine, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? In the guide. Yeah. The, that, that Vi killed me with only Standing Roundhouse. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, Standing Roundhouse is really tough, especially against Dudley, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really it was hard. Standing yeah. Roundhouse. Yeah, it, it was, was super button. good in that in, yeah. in the original. Yeah, yeah. But the thing about it is, I came from Super Turbo, and then Alpha 2 and Alpha 3, you didn't need to use it as much. The way you beat it was by whiff punishing. It. Yeah, and like up to that point, yeah. I had never, yeah, yeah. ever was a whiff punisher. Well, the games weren't whiff punishers, right? Buttons, it so. was about beating buttons, right? Like Zangief standing medium kick with the Shotos, you low strong, and then if you, right. you know, I mean, stuff you, guys, like that. you guys said like in in early SF two when it was slow, you would whiff. Punish, right, if it was right? like Guile crouching slow, medium kick, well, right? I mean. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, like, whiff punishing was a bit around. Like, we were doing it since Street Fighter Two. Yeah, Street yeah, Fighter Two is the saying, easiest. Yeah. But even like you know, tripping Gaz low forward, you know, with Ryu and Ken, yeah, Tomo would do that no problem. You know, like pretty right. much every time. Mm-hmm. Not just the roundhouse, but the low low forward. Yeah, you know, but that it, was but that was always considered like, oh my God, you're yeah. super high level. Yeah, that sounds you know? good to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, and, you know, you stand out there and like you know, just get low, Gaul to mm-hmm. miss a low forward, right. and then you trip him, and then you just cheese him. You know, yeah. so because I remember in that in that first Street Fighter three tournament, I got really far, but then Vi just like roundhouse me to death, and then it was another tournament. I think John Choi ended up winning that one, but there was another tournament like really soon after that. That was the one that I got to winners finals versus Vae, and then uh, I lost that one, and then somehow had to play like four more people, and I eventually lost and ended up in like fourth place or something like that. <laughs> that first one so, I did well, I you know that I, one I'm still mad about. Actually. I guess. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Well, one of these days I'll get that. Uh, I'll get that. You know, like video footage bumped mm-hmm. down. But I mean, it was like old school, first version of Street Fighter Three. John yeah. Choi's the one that uh, won that tournament with Yang. Yeah. Right? yeah. Was, yeah, that, yeah, was yeah. that game played very much at the time? 
I mean, it just came out. It was like three. You know, everybody's yeah. been seeing like you know two and then yeah. alpha yeah. for so long, and then no one was really know. pairing all that much. You know, there wasn't a lot of option selecting going on. Oh, sure, Yin and yeah. Yang were the same character. And I everything. mean, also like the parry system was a lot easier. Oh, you know, God, it was so, so like much easier. you know, in back then it would just uh, with like Dudley or whoever we just walk forward, go down forward, yeah, down forward, yeah. down forward, yeah, down forward. Uh-huh. As soon as you see a flash, they're dead. You right. know what I mean? And if you don't see anything, just throw. Yeah, because because the thing about it is the way that that game used to work. In, 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 in that game before third strike actually in all of them was you just parry it. if you could block it in that direction you could parry it exactly yeah. so if it was a stand if it was a crowd strong and you could parry it either there was no such thing as only parry forward yeah, yeah. moves you know and so you could parry and then there was also two air parries too one that bounced right. you forward and one that bounced you back you know there was the so as you were saying like you know Ryu uh, had that he killed you with like the standing round uh-huh, uh-huh. what you do is you with Dudley just time it and uh, parry down and Dudley's uh, yeah, so yeah, big, yeah, it actually yeah, hits yeah. him on the down, and then yeah, you get the parry. Yeah, yeah. You know? So that was like, you know, like, Jeff was, like, Jeff was the first one. He came to Family Fun one time, and George and I were really, really good at that version, because mm-hmm. we had a game fan. We are playing it, like, eight hours a day. <laughs> we weren't <laughs> nice. even doing our work, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, but uh-huh. this is the first version that I could actually make Jeff feel, like, helpless, you know, at the oh, game. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, I mean, okay, he, just, okay. he just couldn't, Mike, too, you know, because right. Mike started late, and then... You know, there's a point where Mike's like, oh, you better wait till I learn how to play this game. And, uh-huh, you know, I was like, uh-huh. I mean, that was music to my ears because Mike had always yeah, been, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. he had always been beating me up at whatever. Dude, sick. I still yeah. remember the first Southern Hills Golf Line tournament I ever went to was for Alpha 2, right? And I was the Zangief player. And it was the first time I was there. Everyone was playing. But I had gained a reputation from AGSF2 and everything like that, that they were actually nervous about me showing up. And I brought uh, another classmate named Richard Coven there, right? So the two of us went there, and we played, and I had to play Jeff Schaefer. And I remember Jeff Schaefer was, like, nervous, like, when he had to fight wow. me. And I beat him in that game. So, wow. yeah. I even caught him with Zangief anti-air super because he kept okay. jumping back in the corner because that's what Schaefer does. He jumps back in right, the corner, right, right. right? And I remember beating him there. I eventually got to losers finals, but I had to fight my... My my classmate Richard. That's pretty And good, he though. beat me and I was oh, so mad. I was like, Why did I bring you? You know, <laughs> I drove him there. But Vi ended up winning that yeah. tournament. So he beat Richard over there. But you know, first Southern Hills Golf Land tournament I go to, immediately I got like third place and I did it like I fought a Dalsum, I jumped and it was just, I think it was Serlin who was, because we were all Zangief players, and he was like, oh, yeah, you can do this thing where you jump in and custom combo, and then just green hand, green hand, green hand, green hand, you know, destroy him, and then larry it a bunch of times. Yeah. I had never done it before, but I had to fight a Dalsum, and yeah. I was like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. And I jump and I did it, and I pulled it off the first time, and Sick. I beat this Dalsum player, yeah, so. Nice. Man. God. Yeah. Back when I was good. Oh, yeah, well, we're sucks, always, man. you know, we actually have jobs and stuff to do. We can't play, you know, like morning to night. It's a big difference if you're playing morning to night and, you know, you're doing that for like a profession. Yeah. You know, I, know, I mean, right? if you could, oh, you could like, stand Whether a profession it. or just it's your hobby, right? I mean, it was nobody's profession back then. But I mean, right. it was new it was and we hobby. wanted to get good. No, yeah. I'm saying, yeah, no, I'm saying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's new really a profession. You guys put in a lot of time, yeah. but it, it wasn't a profession. Yeah, yeah. Right. of course. I mean, 50 bucks at a tournament, you know, on Saturdays. Not really gonna get you too far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even in back in the nineties, not worth that much. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, but yeah, God, it's fighting games, dude. It's so crazy. Just how long I've been playing Street Fighter for. So it's crazy. Uh, how big was Combo Fiend's Afro in back in the days? I, I mean, haven't seen Combo Fiend back then. Yeah, no, he wasn't even really around yeah. until like CVS one, CVS two time. Yeah. I was already gear. done. Probably like, like I said. I mean, in ninety seven, I pretty much yeah. like quit gaming i only actually got back into like fighting games in 2007 so Ooh. from 97 to 2007 there was like this gap where i just you know i, I followed like you know like gaming and stuff like that mm-hmm, but i just mm-hmm. didn't want to get involved in playing yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, of, of what happened at TGG. Right, right, right. You know? now now schaefer doesn't have a twitter but he's definitely still around yeah. you talk to him occasionally uh, right? the last time i heard he was he moved to atlanta he had moved to texas originally right and then yeah, he moved yeah, to atlanta uh-huh. But uh, he's a good dude, you know. He I mean? had those cool YouTube videos that he put out that yeah. one point in time. Oh, that, that just... even that was forever ago. Yeah, yeah honestly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, so that I... might have been half a dozen years ago. And I remember there was one time Daigo went to like uh, a family fun. So I, that and... was my footage. I taped that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then and then, and then Schaefer showed up to play him. But the thing is, Schaefer Schaefer that. barely played it in the new games, so he was still in it on yeah. like Super Turbo and stuff. So he was actually like beating Daigo. That was probably ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, oh, more that than was, that. I think two thousand four. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was yeah, that long ago. Yeah, yeah, it was that crazy. long ago. Was... Whenever Anniversary Edition came out, because that's what they were playing. Yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. it happened to be Dang. like a night around like I think it might have been an Evo, and then like you know people yeah, came the night after uh-huh, uh-huh, you know to like, like Family Fun. Yeah. 
And uh, they had, Ralph had actually hooked up one American cabinet towards a Japanese cabinet. Mm -hmm. I don't know okay. if you remember that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Family fun was so packed at that, that point. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. actually there for that night. I, wasn't I didn't go there to that, that night. night. Yeah, yeah, I didn't I wasn't either. there at that night. So. I, knew, I knew that it was going to happen and right. it didn't go. Jeff was solid, me. though, man. I mean, he would have given a lot of Japanese players problems just because how he plays, you know. Right. I mean, because nobody's going to put up with that, you know. Right. <laughs> not, especially in the old games, there's not much you can do. In the newer mm -hmm. games, mm -hmm. it's not as effective. But, uh, you know, back in, like, Super Defense, Turbo, defense just isn't the same yeah, in newer games. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, different. Yeah, different, yeah, yeah uh -huh. different stuff. Mm. Well, all right. Man. <laughs> Pretty cool. Thanks, I mean, like, do, I mean do we have, amazing. like... Do we have a potential for like a third part? Do we have more to talk about? Or maybe you're... in uh, twenty twenty six. Okay, okay. And at that point, <laughs> right. we could talk about the first, uh, you know, the first episode when I was on. That'll be right, an OG yeah, story. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. yeah, it's already an OG <laughs> we story. We could start talking about Street Fighter Four, right? That's gonna be OG stories. It would actually be really funny to bring on somebody who's heard of playing an SF four and like yeah, ask their uh -huh. perspective of what's OG to them <laughs> in two thousand nine. Yeah. My my lineage of like OG or like my stories end around like ninety seven. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, actually, you know, I really got into um, obviously design and then yeah. in 99 Japanese and I moved to Japan in yeah. 2000 2001 and uh, Virtua Fighter 4 I was a huge Virtua Fighter 3 fan you know and and when 4 actually came out in 2001 I was going to school over there and I made like a really strict decision not to get into it because wow. I knew what would happen is right. I would you know I would just get a taste and as soon yeah. as I get a taste know you know saying. everything would just go to hell right. that's why I'm because, not sub to WoW right now yeah I mean <laughs> I uh, I did I paid my way through school over there. I paid for my apartment, it, and yeah. it's just like that was a lot of money. It was yeah. like you know I think like twenty five thousand dollars or something like that. And you know I mean someone in the chat just you know made a joke about option selects in Street Fighter Four being OG, but again like that awesome thing that you're talking about going yeah. to beat Bison Champion, in the corner, yeah. right? You walk up and try to throw him, and if he scissor you headbutt. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was an option was, select, that was right? One of the yeah. very first option Nobody selects. called it that, but yeah, yeah sure. we didn't have a name for no, it. Right. But option yeah. selects have existed in every fighting yeah. game, and you'll never get rid of them, no matter yeah. how hard the devs try. Yeah, it's like almost impossible to get well, rid yeah, of them. Yeah, SF4 was a particularly OS heavy game. Yes, so. it was, but it was also kind of necessary because there were so many defensive Let me options. Tell you, that's right? why. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so so when did you move back to the U.S.? Uh, in late, actually uh, mid-2002. So okay. I met my wife uh, at my, you know, just I, was, I started dating her in around like April 2001. And, and where were you living at that time? Tokyo, in uh, Nakano, which okay. is like my school is in Shinokubo. That's, that's where Nakano Broadway is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, I would okay, walk okay. through Nakano Broadway every day. Oh, God, that's so <laughs> awesome. For about a year. Yeah. I'm going to go back there again. It's really yeah, awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's changed a lot, but I mean, there's some, yeah. still some stuff that's like the same. Yeah, it's like, it's like a, it's, you go to Akihabara to buy all the stuff to get tourist trapped, but you go to Nakano Broadway to buy a bunch of stuff over there. For it wasn't like that. Prices. It was like, I mean, they didn't have like the anime stores, the oh, gaming stores really? back then. Oh, no. okay. It was okay. still the Broadway, but those stores weren't around at the time. Or right. like, there were some of them, but they were like really, really small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like one Taito station. Okay, you know, okay, okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I literally walked through there every single day to go to school. That's and uh, yeah, I mean, I met uh, Chizuru. Yeah. And uh, we started, you know, just hanging out and dating. And then in early, like, 2002, I was like, I had like a real problem, like, with um, just getting, like, like, trying to be too efficient with my time. So, like, I, would, I was working out in the morning. I would go to school, like, do my, like, Japanese class, go home study, you know, yeah. do my Japanese homework. Then I was also teaching myself visual effects. Right, right. So I learned visual effects on my own, but I was doing it after my, it was like oh, the curriculum yeah. I made up for myself. Nobody's there to teach me. So yeah. I was just like up to like 1 a.m. And then I'd be yeah. like downloading wares. No, I didn't do that. Just kidding. Um, you know. <laughs> it was like I did. <laughs> uh, like pretty much all night. And then it would just rinse, repeat every single day. And, uh, you know, my body, it took, a, it took a toll. And I started having, like, these weird, like, that's why I started developing panic attacks. Oh, and okay. I got super sick from panic attacks. And I literally thought I freaking broke my brain. Wow. To the point where I had to sell all my shit and just move back to the U.S. Oh, I had wow. to quit okay. school. Okay. It was okay. really scary. Oh, and honestly, wow. like, it felt like, you know, just like, you know, somebody had electrodes, like, you know, stuck to my, my shoulder and to my ear, and they're just like running like a current back yeah, and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then oh, wow. all of a sudden, one night, I think uh, Chizuru was over in my apartment, and then I just couldn't breathe, you know? And then I took a breath, and there was nothing there, and she had to rush me to the ER. Oh, 
Oh, dang. Yeah, it was okay. really messed okay. up. And in a foreign country, you know, I've got nobody besides her there. Yeah. You know, it was really scary, you know. But, I bet. And it took me, after I moved back, like a year to, like, get back to normal, you know. Wow. When did you start taking up capoeira and stuff like that? Uh, actually, in 97 through, like, 99. Oh, so it was before you went there. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, but okay. then I had a shoulder dislocation. And that's actually what, you know, that's why I started right, studying right, Japanese. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But then, again, wow. like, in 2006... 2000, I think 2005, you know, uh-huh. Chizu and I we were already, you know, like uh, together at that uh-huh. point living uh-huh. here, and then we started doing the Capoeira together uh, again. Okay. okay. Did, oh, she, she, did, she, did she move back to? She moved back with me to yeah. America when yeah. you came. Okay. Yeah, maybe okay. like about a month or so later, but Dang, you know, nice. I'm, I'm okay. glad she did because like there'd be no yeah. Okamoto Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm glad you found it. But I mean, yeah. my life would be totally different, and you know, I'm glad. Yeah, no, I would have never had a, a katsu curry sandwich no. from Okamoto I know, Kitchen either, right? So I don't know how I would be. Dealing with this man, I, I did. I did capoeira in college uh, for a couple of years, but I I didn't have an explicit dislocation, but I have a bunch of loose joint issues anyway, mm-hmm. and I couldn't keep going. Okay. And I've always thought it would have been super cool to be able to do that, but at this point, I was 15 years old, and I've only degenerated further, <laughs> so yeah. it's hey, not not in the cards. But I mean, it's super fun. When I was it's younger, super, I awesome. never did anything physical. <laughs> Well, maybe if, maybe if I had it, maybe my, yeah, maybe my bones know, would have right. died. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah. Anyway, being old. Yeah. God. One day, kids, you'll understand. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, one of my favorite stories was uh, Peter Kang, the guy who made Bang the Machine. He's mm-hmm. the guy who funded Bang the Machine, right? So uh, he's, he's also the one that got the Toyota sponsorships for Evo those years mm-hmm. ago and everything like that. Really, really smart guy and stuff. But we were all, he had a super turbo machine at his place, and we would always go there and play. And so it's all the old men playing. And one time he got up out of the seat, and he just was like, ah, got out. And he was like, I used to always wonder why my dad used to make those old man noises. <laughs> and he's like, I totally understand it now. It just feels so, good. There's something yeah. about it that feels good. Just, By the way, what's up, Warren? I, I, that's cool. Oh, dang, nice. Warren from oh, IRC. And AJ exactly. Potato is in here, too. And, Dude, dang, we got yeah. a bunch of. Yeah, well, I, I guess this is technically IRC that you're typing in right now. Yeah, Although yeah it's I not know, FNet, right? so yeah. it's not, not exactly the same deal. Oh, man. Well, dude, fighting game community goes back. And you know what the, the hardest part is? A lot of people have always told me, like, I should write a book or, like, film some stuff. The only problem that that scares me, though, is that I only know the SoCal stuff, right? right? Like, right. I would like yeah. to make sure I go talk to Jason Cole and Graham Wolf and yeah. Jason Nelson to get the NorCal stuff. I don't even know who the true OG East Coast guy is or the Midwest well, guy. Well, the thing so is, like, like there's, right? there's got to be... Seth Killian and Derek Daniels would be the Midwest ones. There, probably, that's Chicago right? specifically, right? right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, there's got to be that guy for every big city. Right, like, that's, exactly. There's got to be somebody. And, and even if the players weren't Tomo level or whatever, like, mm-hmm. every city, I'm mm-hmm. sure, had... The, this click that we're talking about that must have existed everywhere right. just of course yeah. someone did ask in the chat you know they were ta- thinking about vi and um they were wondering how the racial diversity was back then fighting in community has always been super racially diverse of course yeah. diverse because the beginning, yeah. it, it, it literally it was bred from the arcades which is where people when you i mean I, it was you just didn't have any money so you went and played at the arcade because you had a dollar and then you could just like play, you know, a quarter on each of them. And like I said, it was about making your quarter last as much yeah. as possible. Right. And so lower income families, I mean, it's just it's a fact just tend to be more ethnic. Right. And so the arcades, that's where a lot of people gathered. And so fighting games really appealed to a lot of different ethnicities. Yeah. yeah I mean, East Coast could, Eddie Lee would probably be. They one could of the be ones. played the best in dense areas, which tend to be racially diverse. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Exactly. So, did you know uh, Tim Whitfield? You know who that is? No. So he was one dude that uh, he came to Family Fight. He was like a pretty solid, like super solid player. Okay. You know, somewhere on the board for like Street Fighter Two, and mm-hmm. he used to play at LACC as well. That dude is actually like a porn star, you know, and nobody knew. <laughs> yeah. Which, which guy? His uh, his name's Tim Whitfield. Okay. He, he guy had like three or four aliases. Oh, I see. Yeah, but and, and like and he's That's actually funny, on. Dude. He was on like the the ranking board at World's Finest. Yeah. <laughs> That's as so Tim awesome, Whitfield. Dude. Oh, People ended yeah. up in all sorts of walks of life. Dude, I am so yeah. I am so serious right now, dude. Because like you know, actually like, uh, my friend uh, Jason. <laughs> Also, last name Wong. Uh-huh, he was uh-huh. at Family Fun, and uh, he was working there. I was working uh-huh, there, uh-huh. and he, he like one day I came in. He's like, "Dude, you won't believe what I found, right?" And he <laughs> found he found this porn with Tim on there, and we didn't know like he was actually like a porn star. So like the next time like he showed up at the arcade, uh-huh. and we're like, "Dude, 
we saw this we saw this movie and I swear to God it must have been you, dude. It's you gotta be and he, 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 he to took it? his he took his hat and he went like this, dude. <laughs> Okay. By the way, this was God. not like today where there's you're just on the internet. Yeah, and he must have uh -huh. been like in an adult video store. Yeah, of course, dude. That's yeah. so damn little different. Funny. Yeah, it's it's totally different. Yeah. Luckily, I can blame oh, this yeah. on Jason because <laughs> yeah. right, uh huh, uh -huh right, uh huh. J Jason, yeah. Jason <laughs> yeah, whose last name just, just happens to be Wong yeah. when you saw Justin yeah, in the yeah, chat. Yeah, Rob yeah, knows. Yeah, yeah. Bob knows. <laughs> Bob knows that story if you talk to him. But uh, he like uh, he always uh, told us he worked at a telephone company, you know. Uh -huh. He was phoning yeah. home all day. Yeah, uh -huh. I, there's a bunch of jokes I can think of. Oh uh, god, I, I, I don't want to expose anybody because I don't want to, you know, like. Oh, but uh, I'll, if you guys are interested funny. later, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Too funny. That's not the only time I've heard that story in the FGC. That's have I know a couple other examples. Well, I mean, uh, back then it wasn't cool to do something like that. You know what I mean? Now I it's know, like you know, it's somewhat not, it cool now. Yeah, well, for some people it is. Oh, it's sure, acceptable. for some people, yeah. Yeah, there's always those adult cons and stuff like that. I mean, it, well, it's know. that stuff's always existed. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a little bit more accepted. You know, it with is. The internet. It is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. No, the jokes. The jokes he was a right solid player, by the way. Just so you know. He, he was, was like, a solid player? Yeah, right. There's, just no, way. There's no escape. <laughs> you That's said he was guys. a very solid player. <laughs> no escape. That was bad fingering right there, <laughs> Gerald. Um, just wanted to throw that in for you guys. Okay, okay. Thank you. to make the show exciting. Yeah, right? exactly. Oh, my God. Uh. Well, oh, hey, thanks for the sub. Yeah, yeah anything else to chat about now? Or? Uh, I think maybe we can save. I mean, on that note. Yeah, maybe you know, that's on a good the porn way to go note, out. You know, we might as well... Uh, call it a night man but i really appreciate good. you coming back and i'm sorry that we waited a million Dude, years to yeah. do it. Okay, man. it's like i said awesome. we yeah. were we were saying before the stream the main reason why it's taken so long is because david and i just like it's always like an hour before the yeah. show like it's definitely on us it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. guys i mean it's no you know i mean if we did this like every year it would get boring you know the fact that i mean it is like a long period to last it's kind of true yeah way, and there are probably so. like a lot more viewers than there were you know back then a lot yeah, of people yeah, yeah. didn't bother to watch their uh, like the old episode right, or, yeah, yeah. and i'll get you know, this on I mean, youtube really yeah, soon yeah. and I'll, I'll put a link in the in the in the description for the previous episode yeah, as oh, well yeah, sure. although you have to watch it in glorious whatever it's crazy dude the old YouTube videos we've uploaded YouTube at once they updated some stuff that they reprocessed all the videos and they're all in the wrong aspect I heard yeah I saw you guys talking about that. yeah I don't know why but yeah Oh, that's right. You have a Kickstarter right now, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, oh, yeah, man. Plug, plug your stuff. Toshin is talking about that, so that's so, a good idea. So. Um, well, basically, it's uh, we're working on an anime that's you know based on the whole food truck world. The food truck mm -hmm. world, so most people don't know, it is like the dirtiest, most cutthroat world mm -hmm. of like... You know, in, in I FGC, have long conversations yeah. with Gerald about I've this. I've talked about it, too. Okay. I've heard about some of these things, and I'm just like, holy crap. Yeah, I you mean... have no idea, and people really, really have no idea. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we want to tell the story in like a fun, lighthearted way you know mm -hmm. through like our mascot and that's basically what we're raising money for for the kickstarter yeah um you know we started with episode zero which actually introduces people to haru you know our mascot yeah, 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 yeah. but um you know had we the opportunity to do like a little more i think would have been able to like you know like get people give people a taste of what it is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. regardless i mean i would really love to like you know be able to share this with people someday and uh eventually it'll get done you know hopefully through the kickstarter but you know if you could donate We'd really, really appreciate it. Check it out. Check out episode zero. <laughs> it's really funny too, because like they were saying, one of the food truck guys looked like um, uh, uh, she, uh, Machete, right? Danny uh, Trejo. Dan Danny yeah, Trejo, yeah, and yeah. like, like I think people started tweeting at him about it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Uh -huh. I actually talked to his uh, agent. Oh, uh, serious? Two weeks okay, ago. okay, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, we had a conversation, That's and so funny. you know, just throwing it around. I mean, that would be like the the character Javi that right, you know yeah, yeah. Um, uh -huh. we kind of have uh, him envisioned for that role. Uh huh. It uh -huh. would be perfect, but so you know, I mean, it's really so not funny, yeah. dude. Because Danny Trejo, is, by the way, is the most awesome guy. He is. He totally is, ever, and ever you know, he would fit this role so well. Dude, I'm telling you right now, if you don't know about it like just google or on youtube just search for danny trejo and puppies like yeah he's apparently like the biggest animal lover and there's this whole video where like they fool him into doing a, an interview and all they do is just bring puppies into him that the whole hilarious. entire time and he's just like oh it's the puppy. he's like he's just like losing it dude. he so has funny. a donut and coffee place a few blocks away from where i live are you serious he also has a food truck the whole building is colored hot 
bright pink. Oh, wow. Oh, the whole bit's very fun. Wait, so he has a food truck? Yeah, it's called Trails Tacos. Oh. Dude, that's so cool. I think this place is called, like, Trails Donuts. It's like, there's nothing... I see like, that. Yeah, 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 I know, all right. It's, like, very obvious, but yeah. Damn, that's really funny. There's a big picture of his face on the side of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that guy's awesome, dude. I love Danny, Danny Trejos, though. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if anybody's interested, you can find the Kickstarter page. Go to our page, and you'll see it's the, it's yeah, the pinned Yeah, said he just did... He did Kickstarter anime food truck and it was the first result awesome. right oh, there. That's, that's so there good you news, go. Definitely. So, well, he posted we'll the post link in the chat. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate in it. In the chat and then on YouTube, you should. Oh, uh, I'll try to do that if I can remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, for sure. For the sure, uh, so. episode zero is funded. You know, I paid for myself. Obviously, you know, we're, you know, not really like super rich. So, right. we obviously, if we get some help doing it, we would and, love to. And, and Haru is actually voiced by Christina V, who did Christina a lot of v, voices yeah. like in, in, in Skullgirls and stuff. Like oh, cool. Even, I think, High school girl as well. So oh, she's, she's one of the high school oh, girls. Okay, 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 okay. She's done. She's done a lot of work. She's fantastic to work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a uh-huh, super uh-huh. sweetheart. Really, really great yeah, person. Yeah, and yeah. you know, uh, again, we'd love to make more. If you like that episode zero, you're gonna love the rest. You know, there's there's plenty. Oh, she's new in yeah. Blaze Blue as well. Yeah. So, oh wow. You know. Yeah, and Noel. There you go. Oh wow. Dang. That's yeah. very cool. <laughs> hey, in Japanese, is high score girl and high school girl written differently? It is. Yeah. Yeah, high school, but they wouldn't say high score. You know, that's well, just kind of like a yeah. slang that. You know, it, it's a pun, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I was hoping it'd be a pun, uh, uh, but if it's yeah, not, yeah. then okay. I mean, it's funny because the ending song, to which I can never get out of my head, like they actually spe- say the word "distraction" in Japanese, but it sounds like "destruction." So I know a lot of people think it's "destruction." But... That's why I need the subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks Thank you so much again. for having us, yeah. guys. Thanks for really the food. It. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Was excellent. Yeah, I love cool. sharing the stories. And again, like, as soon as we uh, bump down those videos, yeah. I'd love to uh, give it to you guys so you could share sure. it. And I, I honestly, if, uh, if you guys are in, I mean, even if you're not in SoCal, follow Okamoto Kitchen on yeah, Twitter as great well. Food. So lots of really good food. Uh, I, I was one of the people who benefited and got to go for the taste tests before you started <laughs> the truck. And yeah. I. You you gave me one sandwich and you, you even gave us like sheets that we could write comments down and I was like I could eat this every day for the rest of my life. I still have those sheets. Uh-huh. I mean, again, like the same way we started the business is like methodically the same way. Play right. Street Fighter, Virtual yeah. Fighter. You know, everything's done exactly the same way. Yeah. Nice work. There you go. Cool. All right, All right guys. everybody. Um, Thank you, everybody. Congrats we- to. Uh, MK Leo for winning Genesis. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Again, Hungry like, Box, you know. Yeah, and Hungry Box, and it turns out that Cabal is in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, but you know, Devora. we will definitely talk a lot about all that stuff next week. So we'll be a week behind, but we yeah. just wanted to make sure we did this. Otherwise, we absolutely. Ah, God, I got claws in my leg. Well, that's Ow. a bummer. But yeah, Ow. no, absolutely. I'm glad that we did this. Okay. And we'll talk about all the news of the day next week. All right, cool. Thanks, Even guys. The bird. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Hang on, I gotta bird our way out of here, so... We have a new closing song since you've last been here. Yeah, I don't even remember... This is our closing song. I don't know. Neither of us remembers why. I don't know how this happened. It, yeah. Like, I, I had an alarm go off while it was ending, and then everyone just wanted us yeah. to do it forever, and so it's literally <laughs> a ringtone. Nice. It's just all it is, so... I like it. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs>